structured game for Virginia Tech. Ball at the 36 yard line, first and 10. Okie's also out of the eye. Two wide receivers split near side. First possession. And part of their tandem at tailback is Keith Burnell replacing Lee Suggs. Let's set the rest of this offensive unit for the Hokies and the real leader in the middle is Steve DeMasi. Yeah, he's the only guy that returns from that, that offensive line last year that sent the other four to the NFL. Keith Burnell taking over for Suggs who was lost in the first game of the year but we will also see a lot of Kevin Jones a true freshman. Second down six Burnell met head on as he gets across the 30 to about the 32 yard line and Gerald Hayes anchoring the middle linebacker position for the Panthers of Pittsburgh and this is a defense that they say had been underachieving stepped it up last week against Temple had a big game Tyree Young is a freshman at nose tackle yeah watch with Tyree Young later in the game to start to wear down a little bit he's, just, he's a young kid you've already met Gerald Hayes and we'll meet him again as we go along we'll talk about their defensive backs in just a moment it is third down and about four out of the shotgun the first pass for Grant Knoll was it caught at the 49 yard line no it's incomplete Walker there on the coverage Grant Knoll's pass incomplete and each team three and out on its first possession got a player down for Virginia Tech and already down on the play is Sean Witten Witten whose older brother rather his younger brother is much bigger than him and plays at Tennessee uh, this is a guy that made his first touchdown catch in his career last week in the losing cause at Syracuse so you hate to see him go down early he is a workaholic they say even though he's small they list him at six feet but he's not six feet tall and this will not be a good thing for Virginia Tech who's going to need their offensive weapons they need to get their offense back in gear after last week so it was a lackluster performance against Syracuse Matter of fact, Vinnie Burns, who's out there to handle the punting, he'll be kicking to Antonio Bryant. And this obviously is another concern for Frank Beamer. Um, very uncharacteristic for Vinnie Burns to simply drop that snap and went right through his hand. Yes. Virginia Tech has been so sound in special teams. And of course, Frank Beamer spends, spends most of his time coaching up the special teams. And they've been very sound throughout the 90s. They're one of the, one of the best teams, the best team in special teams throughout the 90s. And you rarely see those kind of mental mistakes. And Witten is still down on the near side right right in front of the Pittsburgh bench the far side of the field is the Hokies bench and they're working on that leg looks like maybe his ankle down below looks, looks like his right ankle and that's hard to see I think he's he, he was trying to break on it and just rolled right over it. they've well, got they've got that sock off that's they're definitely going on down into now it just depends whether it's a high or low ankle sprain if that's what it is. You know, the high ankle sprain has kind of come in vogue in recent years, hasn't it? <laughs> it has. And I think part of the reason for that may, may be the shoes that guys are wearing. They're wearing different types of shoes. Sometimes guys will wear the high top shoes and, and they'll get that, that low ankle support. But sometimes if they don't have that support up high. And it would appear now that they're going to bring the cart out to take Witten off the field. So this is not a good start for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. They're going to be three and out on their first offensive possession, as were the Panthers. And we heard. The talk prior to the game, the defense might be one of the keys. This has got to be good news for Pittsburgh to get off to at least a square start with Virginia Tech. The problem with Tech is you've got to get them early because they're very tough if they get ahead of you. Absolutely, and that's what Syracuse did. Syracuse got on top of them, and, and, and they were able to maintain that lead. And Tech is not the type of team, they're not the type of offense that is quick strike. They're going to take their time. They're going to be patient going down the field. So it's important for Pitt to get off to a quick start. And after all the years in Three Rivers and even at uh, Pitt Stadium the old Pitt Stadium which is no more it was artificial surface and this is natural grass it is a heated field surface they share the facility with the Pittsburgh Steelers and Witten is the first casualty of the day and you look at that Don you'd have to think that he's probably finished for the afternoon yeah especially if, he, if he's okay and he's, he's, he's down there and it's just an ankle he can't get up on an ankle and they take him off on the cart not a good sign comes with 1248 to play in the opening quarter no score here in Pittsburgh so it'll be fourth down. The 12th rank Hokies trying to rebound from their first loss of the season, ending a 16 game home winning streak last week at Lane Stadium, Worsham Field in Blacksburg. 
Bryant, the lone deep receiver, standing inside his 20. Some pressure, a low line drive end over end kick, and he'll field it at the 26. The 30 tries to get outside and is chased back inside the 30 yard line and dropped down. Good coverage that time by the Hokies. No score. The Pittsburgh Panthers looking at their second possession when we return to downtown Pittsburgh. I was looking to protect what I have and to achieve some modest growth. I knew I lacked investment skills and I knew I needed professional assistance. Prudential gave me a good feeling that this guy or these people don't have an agenda of their own. There's a lot that I don't understand, but that's where I really lean more heavily on my advisor at Prudential. I'm impressed by their thoroughness and I'm impressed by their detail. I think I found the right people. to the right place. You can feel the spirit. And you know they're glad to see you. And it's good to get together and enjoy some awesome steak. So don't just go out. Go out back. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. Pay $79 per month or see your dealer for nothing down, no payments and no interest until April 2002. From the 29 yard line, it'll be first and 10 Pittsburgh scoreless game. 12 39 remaining opening quarter, along with Greg Roberts, Don McPherson, I'm John Sanders. Priestley going far sideline looking for Bryant out of his hands incomplete. Staying right with him for the second play in a row was Danielle Whitaker. Well, yesterday we talked with David Priestley, and I, I asked him, at what point do you look at Virginia Tech and lick your chops? And he said, early in the game, early in the, in the, in the down and distance, they're going to try to go up top. They're expecting some man coverage. Whitaker has great coverage on Bryant. This ball is underthrown. He gets that ball out there, and, and Bryant has a better shot at it. It'll be second down 10 for the Panthers. Still working out of the eye. Polite is the fullback. Kirkley, the freshman, is the tailback. It's Kirkley looking for some help and he won't get it. He is wrestled down by David Pugh and David Pugh was not in that backfield for Syracuse very much last week but he got in there quickly today. Yeah and I expect Pugh and Beasley to really get charged up and make a, a nice strong upfield push in this ball game. They were ineffective left side of your screen. Pugh was just going to push right up the right up the field. Big strong guy Pugh and Beasley both of those guys are, are, are very strong in the middle have that ability get that push get those those offensive linemen shoulders turned. And you remember how good the defense was in 99 even though Pittsburgh led by Priestley lit them up for a lot of yards but they're just as quick this year as they were a couple of years ago. Inside 12 minutes remaining as Priestley runs away from some pressure throws on the move over the middle flag is down. The hit is made short of the first down the pass is complete out to about the 38 yard line. Pyle coming up to make the tackle and let's check the penalty flag. Yeah, since eliminating that no huddle offense. David Priestley said this, this pit offense is playing with a lot more confidence and they're playing a little bit faster. He says he personally feels more comfortable in this because it's what he grew up with. It's what he learned when he came to the University of Pittsburgh. Exactly. And especially with that West Coast offense with so many things going on. You need that time in the huddle. You need, need that time to, to talk to you guys about what's going on downfield. And the personal foul call goes against the Hokies. So the Panthers are going to get better field position and the first down is the Official call is explained to Walt Harris. Walt, in his fifth year, 
22 and 31. And of course, he, like the rest of the people in this city, had some very high hopes for this team after last year. Blow to the face. Blow to the face. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. First down. The pass completion was not good for a first down, but the penalty will give the Panthers the automatic first down. It's the first one for either team this afternoon. Frank Beamer, on the other hand, 15 years at Virginia Tech, and he knows what Walt Harris is going through as far as building a program. Absolutely right. And Walt Harris looks at Frank Beamer's program and wants to model his after what Frank Beamer has accomplished at, at Virginia Tech. And obviously, these facilities and the facilities that they share with the Steelers, the practice facilities, are a big, big step in building your program. First and ten, the ball out at the 38-yard line. Panthers on their second possession of the afternoon. Did not pick up the first down. They get one by penalty. The quick pass is complete in the flat. And dragged down across the 44 to the 45-yard line. English made the catch, and T.J. Jackson, the linebacker, made the tackle. And, and English is just going to bubble out when, they, when he has nobody on him. Larry Austin is playing way off and giving English plenty of room. You're going to see the pursuit come from the left side. That's coming from inside out. That eight-man front has everyone in the box, and Larry Austin playing way off. So that gives English plenty of room to work out there on the corner. Good pickup for R.J. on first down of eight yards. And right up the middle is Kirkley lowering his head and getting close to midfield. That should be enough for the first down. Again, it's Willie Pyle, who was second on this team in tackles with 52 coming in, and he already has a couple this afternoon. He made a lot last week, which is not necessarily good news. Not a good thing when, when your free safety is making all those sticks. But, but this is a very aggressive Virginia Tech defense. They like to play around the football. They get eight men in the box and play very aggressive around the ball. English goes to the left. Bryant comes to the right. Chris Wilson is the tight end on the left side and there's the quick pass to English at the 50 it's away from one has a first down for Pittsburgh he's inside the 30 yard line down near the 28 yard line before English has run out of bounds same exact play other side of the field Larry Austin playing way off English it gives him that room. He's, just, he's not, it's not even a route. He's just going to kind of bubble out there. And then he makes a nice little stick move on Austin. A little hesitation move. And Ben Taylor has to come all the way out. That's why, that's why Ben Taylor is a semifinalist for the Buckets Award. That guy plays sideline to sideline. But it's a 23-yard pickup for English and the Panthers, who are driving on their second possession. Of course, Panther fans have seen this before. They've seen the offense click early, and then things fall apart late. Priestley comes back to the huddle. He's a California product, a redshirt senior out of Los Alamitos, California. And he's got that kind of uh, blonde hair, that oh, California yeah. look, doesn't he? He walked in the meeting room yesterday and took over the meeting. First down, Panthers. Ball at the 28-yard line of Virginia Tech. I know, I saw that. And a flag down. Well, that play is rubbed out before it gets underway. Priestley had a huge game two years ago against these Hokies, and then last year, Terman did it. So they know what it's like to put up offense. That illegal procedure penalty moves it outside the 30 to the 33. You get the sense from talking with David Priestley that he finally gets the team his way. Last week against Temple, this week against Virginia Tech, he shared with Terman for all those years, and now he finally has his team. They threw out the no huddle offense. They were very uncomfortable with that. He's at a level of comfort now, I think, where he's going to shine. That was English in motion, the straight drop, and some pressure right at his feet, and he gets it off to the tight end, Wilson. Wilson gets inside the 25, down to about the 24-yard line, and we have a late flag on that play after the completion to the redshirt sophomore, Chris Wilson. Taylor made the tackle for the Hokies. We've got another penalty. Yeah, usually when you, when you get a late flag like that, that's, you know. This so, one goes against Pittsburgh. Somebody's getting the business under the, under the crowd, under the pile. And that will back the Panthers up after the nice gain inside the 25. Personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty, second down. A huge penalty for Pittsburgh. It'll be up second down and long as the ball comes all the way back to the 39-yard line. The type of year it's been for, for Walt Harris and, and the Pitt Panthers, you, you, these, these kind of setbacks with a nice drive going is, is something that goes right to the bottom of your stomach because it, you start to think, oh, no, here we go again. Well, it has been a mistake-prone Panther team. As a matter of fact, 
They are minus 11 in the turnovers and back to back weeks they had five turnovers in two consecutive games. Three wide receivers in this formation one setback that's Kirkley the freshman. Priestley on second down and 21. Looks far side. Incomplete. A bump and the late flag. R.J. Jackson was down there on the plate, or rather T.J. Jackson, along with Whitaker. The bump came against Bryant, and uh, a lot of yellow flags early, Don. Yeah, well, well, what Virginia Tech is trying to do is get a little bit of help with their corners. Their corners are banged up. They have some injuries. You got Whitaker getting a nice jam on Bryant. I don't know why Priestley goes to him, but they run Jackson all the way out from his linebacker position to give some help. And Jackson's just not a good cover linebacker, and he doesn't even look up for the ball. It's a, a big mistake for a linebacker covering a receiver down the field. When the receiver's eyes go up, your eyes have to go up. He doesn't make that move. 9.39 still remaining. That's going to make it a first down for the Panthers. And the, right now the officials are getting more yeah. exercise than that's the players. Right, that's right. <laughs> Four first downs on this drive, two of them on penalties. It's an automatic first down at the 24-yard line. Well, the Panthers get a break on the interference call and set it up at the 24 of the Hokies. Again, a three wide receiver formation. English was in the slot, and now they're upset because they're going to have to take a timeout. He didn't have Kirkley on the field. They had some personnel problems. They, they go to, they break the huddle without Kirkley, then Kirkley comes on the field. So, Lucy figured probably a pass play. Quarterbacks call a timeout when it's a pass play because they don't have the right protection. Well, and you wonder, game eight of the season, how can that happen, huh? It did happen. So Priestley and the Panthers will try to regroup looking at a first and ten. And let's go down to the field once again for the third member of our crew. Here's Greg Roberts. Greg. Hey John some bad news for the Virginia Tech defense their outstanding defensive tackle David Pugh has left the field. He's gone to the Virginia Tech locker room with what, what the medical staff is telling me is a sprained left knee. Now they're saying they're going to fit David with a brace and he will return to action. Back to you. All right Greg thanks for that update because he's very important. The way it's gone for the Hokies they could probably scope his knee and bring him back to the second <laughs> half. <laughs> These guys do feel quick. Don't well, they? they do. The medical advances have been unbelievable. Anyway, the Panthers are back on the field, and so are the Hokies. And, of course, you look along that defensive front, that's going to bring in Channing Reed probably to back up David Pugh. He's a junior, but he's not David Pugh. That, that's exactly right. You know, when you look at what we talked about in the open, when special teams sets the tone and then the team starts to break down, you see some mistakes. Now you have the injury to Witten, the injury to Pugh, and then look at all these penalties by Virginia Tech. They are not playing like they have in the past. They're playing a little like they did the past week. That's so right. Far. First and ten, and some pressure by House right up the middle of the throw, the catch to touchdown. It's Antonio Bryan into the end zone. He beat Kevin McAdam, and the Panthers strike on a 24-yard pass play. That's the combination for Pittsburgh. Second down, that's when they know they're going to get the pressure. That time, Ben Taylor shot the gap up the middle and left McAdam one on one with Antonio Bryant. Nick Lotz out of the hold of Andy Lee looking for the extra point, and the Panthers trying to stake themselves. Flag down, the kick is good, but we'll wait and see. For Antonio Bryant, that's his 23rd catch in the last three years against the Hokies, and that is his fifth touchdown against Virginia Tech. Well, they'll have to kick it from five yards farther back. But shouldn't be a problem for Lotz, who was the special teams player of the week because he hit four last week in that win over Temple that really helped turn this whole atmosphere around. Five yard penalty. Replay the try. And I tell you what, we could tell the difference when we went into the practice facility, that beautiful facility they have on the south side yesterday. What that win against Temple, even though it was Temple, what it meant to the team. Absolutely. You know what? When you get a win, like you said, doesn't matter who it is, you can breathe. You get that you get that monkey off your back. You get the people in the media saying nice things about you. All those things just in your daily life. It, life is so much better when you get a win. This time the point after is good. So he does it the second time. He's made 16 out of 17. A 24-yard Priestley 
to Bryant scoring strike and the Panthers have the early lead Pittsburgh on top seven nothing over the Hokies at home more to come from Pittsburgh. Something should never come between two people. Least of all, their long-distance service. That's why at Verizon, we keep it simple and straightforward. Take our timeless plan. You get the same flat rate anytime, any day, for all direct dial domestic long-distance calls from Pennsylvania, with no monthly fees, no surprises. So you can call anyone and take all the time you want. And with all your Verizon local and long-distance calls on one bill, it couldn't be any more convenient. Plus, you'll have one place to turn for customer service. Why not call 1-866-525-5700 today to sign up for the timeless plan? Because nothing should stand in the way of what you want to do. Nice talking with you, Marion. Lovely talking to you, Eric. It's your life. It's your call. Verizon. We are back. Bryant with the touchdown catch. And the Panthers have taken the seven to nothing lead here at Heinz Field and they do believe as they celebrate the 25th anniversary of their national championship team. We'll talk more about that. And so will Greg will have a special halftime guest as well. I often wonder what is it that they believe. They believe that their team can win. OK. All right. Well, Those are faithful well, people. <laughs> Even if they are two and five. <laughs> that's right. Well that's all that's what do they believe. Here's Davis the deep man he'll field the kick by locks at about his own two. 15 20 a little room there tries to dance outside has some room at the 30 35 stutter step and spins across the 40 to near the 42 yard line before he's brought down a 40 yard return of the opening kick. Gilliard makes the tackle on the special teams and good field position for the Hokies. Seven plays, 71 yards, capped by the 24-yarder to Bryant. Yeah, and John, you know, when, when a team brings pressure, when they bring pressure up the middle, it causes mis mismatches on the outside. And this time, McAdam, who's more like a strong safety or linebacker, is teamed up one-on-one -on -one with Bryant. He's just not going to work. He's just not going to be able to cover him in the open field. Well, he almost got there, but Bryant made a heck of a catch, and it was a good throw by Priestley. First down, 10 at the 42. Power running by Burnell up the middle of the 45. And then he is stuffed by that Pittsburgh defense led by Joe Conlon. They are missing Ryan Smith along that defensive front, but not by much because Ryan Guzik, who was outstanding against Temple, gets the start. Yeah, they don't, they don't lose very much with Guzik in there. And, and this defense right now is going to have to step up and shut down this Virginia Tech running attack because Virginia Tech is not likely to go up top. Although you saw Andre Davis in return, they have the weapons to go up top. And they will try to go up top at some point in this game. Second down seven from the 45 yard line out of the I formation. The play fake and the pass is caught down at the 44 yard line. The pass complete over there to Davis. Just a guy we talked about. Kuzik got out there on the play. Didn't go for the run fake inside. Was able to get it back outside on Davis. And that ball was thrown a little bit low. Didn't give Davis enough time to will take a good look downfield. Actually lost a yard on the play, so it'll be third down and eight. It's a big down for Pitt. Not a good start offensively so far for the Hokies. And again, Grant Knoll, the redshirt junior native from West Virginia, goes from the gun. Looks deep down the far sideline, a foot race, incomplete. No flag. It was intended for Emmett Jones and Chante Spencer was with him, but uh, Emmett Johnson was there as well. Yeah, it, this is a good no call by the official. We have a penalty in the back here, but it's a good no call downfield. This ball was not catchable. Way over the head of Johnson, way too far inside. Well, the penalty was declined. The Panthers would rather have the football back and they will get it. 
Vinnie Burns is back to kick. Antonio Bryant to receive. Well, Frank Beamer for the second week in a row starts in a hole, and we said you got to get the Hokies early, and so far Syracuse did it last week. They got 14 points in the first quarter, and the Panthers have scored first today. Bryant standing at his own 15-yard line. A better kick that time. Good pressure by Pittsburgh. You'll feel it at the 18. Steps up, spins away from one tackle at the 22. Cuts it upfield at the 25 and is pushed back. Well, the Panthers' third possession will come from about their own 25 yard line as Austin and Browning win team up for the tackle. Let's take a look now at our wide out of the week. It is brought to you by Polaris. It's not just a sled, it is a priority. And what a shocker, a wide receiver for Miami. <laughs> They've had a few, a few pretty good ones. This is Andre Johnson who caught six. And Hurricane's just doing everything right right now. Dorsey, of course, a strong candidate for the Heisman Trophy, but he's got a terrific offensive line and some great receivers. Yeah, and Andre Johnson catches that last pass and a lot of traffic. Spotted just outside the 24. First down 10. The Panthers' third possession of the opening half. English to the left, Bryant to the right, and there's the handoff to the freshman, the Virginia native Crickley, who races out across the 30 to near the 33-yard line before being dropped on the play. So Kirkley, a true freshman who is playing, and his long run is 57. He's averaging only about 60 yards per game. But he's still getting his feet wet. And he's done a nice job for them. They, they had a huge board with Barlow leaving and, and they going, so they, they had to get someone in there, and Kirkley's done a nice job stepping in as a true freshman. Second down and a couple. Panthers out across the 30. Still working out of the eye. Basically the same formation that they run almost every down. And this time it's a quarterback keeper. First down. Racing across the 35 to the 36 is Priestley. <laughs> that was a busted play of David Priestley. Did the smart thing. When you miss your back as a quarterback, the thing you're taught to do is to follow the blocking scheme. Don't panic and just go where the back was supposed to go. That's exactly what Priestley did. Brian Welch made the tackle, but you've got to hope that he knocked somebody knocked somebody down, right? <laughs> That's right. Get out of the way. <laughs> Listen, if you're not there for the to accept the ball, go block somebody. First and ten Panthers. They move it out to the 37-yard line. Still in the first quarter, 650 to play. The quick pass to English. 40, 45, first down. Pittsburgh moves it back into Czech territory as Wilds and Taylor teamed up to make the tackle, but they are using that quick pass to the far side. They will continue to do this until Virginia Tech comes up and covers English. Not a route. As long as he's not covered, they will continue to throw this and Wilds. Austin, these corners have to come up and confront these guys. Otherwise, they're going to continue to throw that, that short hitch pass. It is a 16-yard pickup. And this time, English comes near side, and there is Bud Foster, the defensive coordinator for the Hokies. Works down on the field. And he throws that one away. I'm not exactly sure what English was supposed to do, but I don't think uh, that he and his quarterback were working on the same play. Yeah, and they're talking right now. They're talking right now, and, and, and English is talking to, to Wilds on the other side. But they're talking about how to read that, how to read the, the soft corner. If he's way off, we're just going to bubble out, throw me the ball. If he starts to come up, what Priestley wanted was for, for English to read the corner coming up and then take off down the field. When he didn't get it, he did the smart thing, threw it to his mom in the stands. Slow start for David, but picking it up five of his last six. And this time it's Antonio Bryant to the left, English to the near side. Pittsburgh leading seven to nothing, 6.20 to play in the half. Straight drop, fire over the middle, incomplete. Coming up to make coverage on the play, it was Chris Wilson was the intended receiver, and Willie Pyle, number 35, was right there for the Hokies. Wilson's got to come up with that catch. Priestley put it right where it, where it had to be on the outside shoulder. Nathaniel Adibi looks like he's coming up a little hurt. So Adibi will be helped off the field. Injuries beginning to mount. This will be the second player off that defensive front for the Hokies and the third player overall to be helped from the field. So we'll keep Greg Roberts busy down there letting us know what's going on. Boy, boy this is not a good sign for Virginia Tech. You, you can almost see that the, the entire season begin to turn when you when you break down with what, you, what is your specialty, which is special teams last week, and now three injuries in the first quarter. It's third down ten. And 
A flag down on the play again. Probably a legal procedure before the Panthers can get it underway. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. It'll be third down and 15 then as they'll back the football across midfield into Pittsburgh territory. And the Hokie fans, about 4,000 making the trip here to follow their team. That's four penalties against Pittsburgh. Three of them have been for false starts. Maybe not everybody's adjusted to no huddle. That's right. Well, it does. It, the tempo of the game does change, and, and they've been practicing at a higher tempo, and these guys will get used to it as, as this remainder of the season goes on with the no huddle. Three wideouts in this formation for Pittsburgh. It's third and 15. Looking long, near sideline. It's overthrown, incomplete, and there is no flag on the play. It was intended for Darcy Levy on the near side, and Wilds playing because of the absence of Eric Green, who has tonsillitis, did not make the trip for the Hokies, so they're a little thin in that secondary. They only dress, they only travel with four corners, so they can't afford any kind of injuries. They've had a few on defense. They can't afford any injuries on the corners. Lee will kick to Andre Davis, who now needs, what, about a 28 yards to set the all-time record. Lee, the third-ranked punter in the Big East, is in the top 50 in the NCAA. It's a high. Nice. Davis fair catch, back pedals to about the seven-yard line. So the exchange of punts, good job by Pittsburgh. They win the battle of field position after a 45-yard kick. They're winning the battle of the scoreboard, seven nothing. Back after this. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. So many more readers, so many more reasons, so many more well-recognized journalists who provide expert insights and award-winning coverage. It's Steelers news from reporters at the top of their game, and it's the drive to get to the bottom of the story. It's medical information at the hands of a professional, and it's an eye for incredible images. It's the expertise that more than one million readers have come to expect every week, and just a few of the reasons so many more people read the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Serious times, serious choices. For Supreme Court, there is a difference. Kate Ford Elliott has never tried a case before a jury. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Elliott's never prosecuted a criminal. Not a single one. Not enough experience. Mike Aiken, 20 years experience as a prosecutor. Aiken's tried hundreds of cases, stood with victims, put away violent criminals. The difference is experience to protect Pennsylvania Aiken Supreme Court 7 nothing Pittsburgh that's not the only problem for the Hokies here's Greg on the Virginia Tech injury front David Pugh has emerged from the Virginia Tech locker room he is wearing that left knee brace however Sean Witten Virginia Tech split in will not emerge from that locker room guys it's reported to me by the uh, head trainer for the Hokies Mike Goforth that he has suffered a broken fibula in his lower right leg that means he's done for the rest of the regular season John wow. that is a blow to Virginia Tech Oh, what a painful injury that is. Now the new tailback is Jones. Eastlick is the fullback. So new running backs for the Hokies on this possession. This is the highly touted freshman from Philadelphia. Jones dragged down after he picks up about a yard on a play. And right there with him was Mark Parco. He may not be the biggest nor the fastest, but his coaches will say he's as good a football player as they've ever had at this school. And that's saying a lot. That is saying a whole bunch. <laughs> Especially after those guys we saw roll That's out. Exactly right. Prior to this game. The 76 National Championship team, the silver anniversary, including Tony Dorsett, who will join us at halftime and talk about Tony Dorsett Drive right here by the stadium. Second down, nine. Knowles pass is complete. Spinning down near the 15 yard line is Johnson, Emmett Johnson. Now Johnson is much bigger than Witten. He's about 6'3, and we mentioned Sean Witten, who's out of, for the rest of the game, is only at about 5'10. Passing yardage, and we expected this to be heavily in favor of Pittsburgh because they're going to throw the football more. Another big third down play here. Third down and about two. Four 
55 remaining. Opening quarter. It's been dominated so far by Pittsburgh. Here's Jones. No, sir. He will not get to that first down marker. Hit by Gerald Hayes, the middle linebacker, a native of New Jersey. He came in with 72 tackles to lead his team, and he made the hit right there, put his helmet right on it. And this Pittsburgh defense has been challenged in the past few weeks, and they stepped up their game against Temple, and they continue to do so today against Virginia Tech, playing very tough in the run game inside the box. They look very, very strong. Well, Hayes with a big stop on third down. It's fourth and two, and Burns to kick. The Panthers will get good field position as Bryant backs inside the 45, fields it at the 43, looking near side, 50. Puts his head down, gets across midfield down to about the 47-yard line, and that's where the Panthers will have it following Burns' 43-yard punt. A 7 to nothing. Pittsburgh Panther lead and here on our Big East football syndicated game we will take you next week to Syracuse looking forward to that Don because your former team the Orange been playing very well right now moving up in the rankings and looking to join the elite bowl picture. Yeah and, and Paul Pasqualoni has what I call uncompromised intensity and he's just kept his team focused all year long. They have won seven consecutive games they're undefeated in the Big East hold the victory over Virginia Tech from last week and they need the week off that they got this week. The ball is at the 47 yard line of the Hokies. Not much there as they hand off to the tailback. Kirkley there defensively now. Coles Colas makes the tackle, number 99. Pittsburgh has to feel good about what's happened. They've played most of this first half, first, most of this first quarter on Virginia Tech's side of the field. And that's exactly what Virginia Tech has done to so many teams over the years, is play that field position game in their favor. They're losing that field position game so far. It's Bryant to the near side, English to the far side. Saka Polite is the fullback. The tailback is the freshman, Kirkley. Second down and nine. The throw for Bryant is knocked away. Let's see which way the flag goes. You saw Whitaker point back toward Antonio Bryant, and we'll see what the officials call. Well, Bryant looked like he may have, you know, that old adage, you have to become a defensive player as a wideout. And it goes against the Hokies. That is their second pass interference call against Antonio Bryant. Well, this is a great matchup right here. Whitaker and Bryant, two outstanding football players, and I think Whitaker just has outstanding position. That is a bad call by the official. He just out, had outstanding position on Bryant. Well, Whitaker was not happy with one of the calls last week, and you know that Frank Beamer is not happy. Yeah. And, and you don't see Frank Beamer no. lose his stack like that too often. You do not. And let's see if Frank Beamer is going to get a flag because one goes down on the far side of the field. The pass interference call, of course, going against the Hokies. Sideline warning. In other words, Frank, you got to stay on the bench. <laughs> Frank is not happy. He's got some nice sunglasses on, but he's not happy right now. And I don't, I don't blame him. That was a bad call by the official. Whitaker had outstanding coverage. Great position on Bryant. Bryant had to become a defensive back and, and knock the ball down. It is first and ten at the 32-yard line. The Panthers leading 7-0. Three minutes, 10 seconds to play in the opening quarter. I'm John Sanders along with Don McPherson and Greg Roberts down on the field. And Greg so far has just been in charge of the injury report for the Hokies. Here's Priestley. Has time. Sets, waits, throws, pass complete. Down at the 19-yard line. As they go to English, R.J. English made the catch. He circled back just a bit but still gets the first down inside the 20. English has been the guy who stepped up when Bryant was hurt and they put these guys on the same side. This is just a switch route. They kind of let one guy go and then English just kind of sits down in the middle, finds an open space and gets a lot of room there in the middle. Another key though, of course, was that front giving Priestley time to set up and let, let that develop because it took a while, didn't it? Absolutely. The offensive line doing a, a, a great job of giving Priestley time so far. Inside the 20, it's first and 10 Panthers. Play action fake. Priestley looks, throws for the end zone. Incomplete. McAdam and Whitaker were there defensively. Bryant was there for Pittsburgh, but it is out of bounds incomplete. 
And this is what we talked about. McAdam, right side of the screen, number five, is going to be underneath Whitaker over the top. And they're just going to try to double up on him. Nice. Great nice, catch. Nice catch. Right in between the two defenders. Pretty good throw. They just ran out of real estate. So this time, English and Bryant both go to the far side of the field. Osaka Polite will get a couple as he gets down to about the 17 yard line. The one thing you can tell after watching Pittsburgh early in the year, they always looked a little disjointed and out of sync when they were in that hurry up no huddle offense. They seem much more relaxed. Yeah, you know what it is? I, in that no huddle offense, you don't get a chance to think or talk to each other. And I think that's what makes a big difference. David Priestley said in practice, you know, the tempo in practice is very slow because that's when they were just kind of really not thinking about what they're doing so they, they were questioning themselves a lot now when they huddle up they, everybody knows what they're doing and leave the, the huddle with their assignments Furman has joined this offensive set with two receivers left two receivers right Priestley in some trouble looking for help he's got pressure and throws it away not much he could do there he simply dumped that one away getting good pressure up in front from Coles Colos was there and uh, Jim Davis well, Antonio Bryant made a nice catch, but it was out of bounds on this drive. So the Panthers now will turn it over to their field goal unit and uh, coming off a terrific game. As a matter of fact, equaling a school record with four last week was Nick Lotz, who was six of ten in field goals. And he's got a chance to move up. He has already tied Mark Schubert for number eight all time, and he can move up even more. Is blocked, and that's what the Hokies do so well. Tech comes away with it, racing down the near side is Austin. But from behind, he will not be caught. Whitaker's going to take it all the way into the end zone. 72 yards. Austin got the block. Whitaker got the football, and we have seen it year after year after year. That's the ninth kick that they blocked against Pittsburgh. That's more than any other opponent in the Big East. Well, that's Beaver ball at its finest. If the offense isn't getting it done, the defense is struggling a little bit. Special teams turn turns up and turns it up a notch and gets the game turned around a little bit. So a huge play for the Hokies. And this is how they have made their mark in college football in the last decade with these special teams. The point after now coming up. Carter Worley has been perfect in PATs, and he remains so. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. No matter how much you work against it, it seems to happen over and over again. And they got a good surge up the middle and off the left side. And this Virginia Tech team has been so good. And you got Austin coming in, but you, you got a little bit Austin McAdam. And that's the thing about Virginia Tech. They play their starters on special teams. And that might have been Cobb, the defensive end, number 28, who was able to get in there and get a hand on it. And yeah, wound up in the right guy's hands, though, because Whitaker was off to the races. Nobody was going to catch him. 72 yards later, it's a touchdown. And the Hokies have tied the ball game up. So update Beamer ball for you. And uh, Frank Beamer is specialized in this. Special teams 25 touchdowns and 69 TDs total. More than a lot of teams offenses can can, can claim over the last few years. Now yeah, that's the change for Beamer from last week. His offense so far has been struggling but the special teams get on the board. Yeah, and special teams is all about attitude. You see all these starters Whitaker. You know, they, they only have four corners and yet they have Whitaker and Austin. They have these guys playing on special teams. It's all about attitude and Frank Beamer still that new in this ball club and lets them know. Hey listen if the offense isn't getting it done. We can score other ways. Baller up will be kicking off to Spencer on the right and Torrey Cox on the left. Torrey Cox a defensive back. A roommate of Antonio Bryant, although Antonio said yesterday, I don't cut him any slack in practice. Fields it right at the goal line. 10, 15, will not get to the 20. As he has wrestled down. One out of town score for you. It is Miami on top of Temple. Game just moving into the second quarter being played I would assume under some rather rainy stormy conditions down there in the Orange Bowl. The hurricane off the coast. The hurricane Michelle this one. Yes I think it is. 
That's oh. why I'm glad to be here with you oh. this week. <laughs> All the way up to the M's already. Well, it's still hurricane season, even though it is November. Kirkley and Polite are the running backs behind Priestley and uh, sensing movement, and a flag goes down. And charging off was a DB. And it is going to be the fourth five yard penalty remains first down of those calls against Pittsburgh. What's happening there? Well, it could be it could be the rhythm of, of the cadence. It's a little bit different when you're in the shotgun and the no huddle. The rhythm of the cadence is a little different than when you're actually breaking the huddle going to the line of scrimmage. So that rhythm may be throwing off that their offensive line. Fourth false start five penalties so far against the Panthers. This is first and 15 from the 13. So it's Pittsburgh in a hole. And that defense beginning to pick it up for the Hokies. Here comes Kirkley. No game. He tried to high step his way, and Ben Taylor, number 40, was right there, along with McAdam. We saw Ben Taylor earlier in the pass game covering downfield and talked about how this kid plays sideline to sideline. Ben Taylor just has the ability and the speed and the power to force plays back inside. That time he got upfield. And forced to play back into McAdam. Well, this time it'll be Slade and English to the left, Bryant to the right. Three wideouts in this formation on second down and 15 for Pittsburgh. That's English, the motion man. Priestley throws to him, makes the catch at the 30, gets away from the first tackle, 35. First down at the 40 yard line. Paul playing with control. You saw it there from English. Finally, it's Pyle who makes the tackle. And Priestley was just waiting for English to turn around. He had such a soft corner that English was going down the field in his route, but Priestley wanted him to turn sooner. A 27-yard Panther pickup out to the 40, first and 10. And as they have done the last two years against the Hokies, they've used this pass offense to put some pressure on them. English this time to the left. Antonio Bryant to the right. Looking for English. Just out of his reach, he was in a foot race there with Austin, and another flag comes down. Wow. I'll tell you, if you're in the defensive secondary, you better not get close to anybody the way it's going. <laughs> That's exactly right. These are tough calls when it, when it seems like receivers just get caught up in the feet. And Larry Austin gets that hand. He said that you, you extend that hand and get that hand on the arm. That's all that the official needs to see. You pull that hand down. That is the third pass interference call against the Hokies here in the first quarter, and we're still in the first quarter. 33 seconds to go. I, I can't imagine either coach is, is happy with the way their teams have played so far. Well, the first quarter itself is over 45 minutes long. That's the way it's been. Of course, we've had the injuries to the Hokies. It's a first down for the Panthers. They are back in Virginia Tech territory at the 45. The other thing that is happening to Frank that usually doesn't happen is the other guy's got the football more than you do. That's right. He's not looking happy on the sideline. But the second quarter they have dominated. They've given up only three points the entire season. Bryant makes the catch. Trying to fight for a first down. He's wrestled down by D'Angelo Hall, who's there, along with Willie Pyle. We're in beautiful brand new Heinz Field in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on this first November Saturday. A matchup of Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders, along with Don McPherson and Greg Roberts, who's taken over as the injury reporter so far today. And it's not been good for Frank Beamer and the Hokies. Yeah, the, the only crew that's been more that's been busier than, <laughs> than the Virginia Tech trainers are the officials. That's right. They're going to measure for the first down. Bryant was fighting to pick up that first down. He had a touchdown catch earlier in the ball game, a 24-yard play, and it is a first down. The Hokie touchdown coming up on the 72-yard return of a blocked field goal attempt. So Priestley goes back, gets a chance to visit with his coaches. J.D. Brookhart is the offensive coordinator for the Panthers. I noticed it was the day after Halloween and home game. You know, you go to a hotel and all of the youngsters were there, still high on the candy they got on Halloween. <laughs> they were all over the office. English left, Bryant right.
We're in the final five seconds first quarter. The Panthers, oh, there's movement again. Lifting up on the right side for Pittsburgh that time was Morgan. Matt Morgan lifted up. You know, one of the things is David Priestley told us yesterday. Five-yard penalty remains first down. That in the early downs, they're going to go up top because they know Virginia Tech like, likes to blitz. Blitzing linebackers and people from the secondary gives you a chance to try to draw them off sides with the hard cap. And he's been using that hard cap. Told us he would use that hard cap. Unfortunately, he's getting his own guys. And he has gotten them for the fifth time today, but it's a 7-7 seven, seven first quarter. It was the Panthers scoring first, capping a 71-yard drive on this 24-yard touchdown pass Priestley to Antonio Bryant. The answer came, as it so often does, for the Hokies from their defense. There's the block. Winds up in the hands of Whitaker. It's 7-7 seven, seven after one. Hey, man, where have you been? The Outback. In the Outback, huh? Well, you missed a great game. No, I saw it there. In the Outback. Mm-hmm. It's a good reception. It's great. And they're very friendly, too. You see any uh, wildlife? Well, the Big Bloomin' Onion's pretty wild. And the food? <laughs> We're talking about the food. <laughs> <laughs> so don't just go out. Go out back. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Hi, I'm Phil Mickelson. Everybody can use a good tip. Thanks, Phil. And I give my best tips only in Golf Digest. Golf Digest is the golf magazine. Information on equipment, the best places to play, easy to follow tips, and instruction from the best teachers and players in the game. Call 800-543-6200 and get your first issue risk-free. That's 12 issues for only $19.77, including this handy pocket tips booklet. Call right now and get this instructional video free. I'm telling you, it's the best tip you'll ever get. Right now you can get two big beefy quarter pounder with cheese sandwiches for just three dollars at McDonald's. Is that a great deal or what? We love to see you smile. Are you still here? Didn't you hear me? Two quarter pounder with cheese sandwiches are just three dollars at McDonald's. But only for ten days, bucko. It's not like it's forever. So go. Hurry. We love to see you smile. Some things should never come between two people, least of all their long distance service. Verizon Long Distance. Simple calling plans, no fine print, one bill for local and long distance. Won't you give me one sweet kiss? Then you'll know true love exists. Verizon. Downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At the point. Brand new Heinz Field 7-7 ball game. And the Panthers in that first quarter, Don had the football almost twice as much as the Hokies. And again, when Virginia Tech doesn't have a, a quick strike offense, that's a problem. Priestley, 8 of 16, throwing the football. Play action, looking, setting, looking, throwing down the middle for English. And it's incomplete and almost picked off by Pyle, who was playing deep safety. Larry Austin on the coverage, but Pyle was the closest to that one. They ran that switch route again with Priestley and Bryant. And they're expecting the, they're expecting the coverage to follow Second Bryant this time. Priestley just way over throws his football and, and, and even in the wrong direction. He wanted to kind of take English to the other side of the field. It'll be second down and 15 from the 40. They need to get to the 35 to keep the drive alive. This drive has covered 42 yards so far. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, second quarter just underway on a delay and a hit. Slamming into him was Ben Taylor. Kirkley carried the ball, but Taylor was right there. I got some help inside from Chad Beasley. Let's look, Don, at those first quarter stats. We mentioned that time of possession. And, and that 
with the arrow. 12 first downs. But the good news for Tech, it's 7-7. Pittsburgh has dominated. It'll be third down. Ryan comes to the far side. English coming near side. Along with Slade in this three wide receiver formation. Priestley's going to run. 35 steps out of bounds as he gets inside the 35 yard line. It'll be well short of a first down. Chased down by Taylor. And Davis. And, and Pittsburgh's going to have to get their run game going. It's going to help their play action game. Right now, Virginia Tech is starting to lay back a little bit on their pass game, sit on their routes a little bit. They need to get their run game going to get those linebackers. See, they're, they're using it. The, Virginia Tech's using their linebackers to, in coverage and trying to get those guys to help help their corners out. So they need to get that run game going to suck those linebackers back in. The, into the middle back into the box and they're going to punt it it was interesting to note that Walt Harris said the one reason they went to the no huddle and you can see the game clock is winding down they're going to get it off high it looks like it's headed for the end zone and it is the one reason they went to the no huddle was to help their run game it didn't turn out that way we have a timeout with 1358 remaining first half the Hokies and the Panthers tied up at seven in Pittsburgh. Stay with us back after this. She went to work as a teacher helping reading disabled kids. And as a judge, she made sure our justice system worked for children at risk. Superior Court Judge Kate Ford Elliott. I've put this robe on for 12 years now, but underneath I am still a mother and a teacher who knows that the most important thing is protecting our families, our children, and our way of life. Pittsburgh's Kate Ford Elliott, a Supreme Court justice with common sense for our changing times. We've kept Americans moving, and there's no reason to stop now. Chevrolet. Right now, get 0% financing on every new car we build. Malibu, Cavalier, Impala. The cars behind a nation that never slows down. And you can own one interest-free. Keep America rolling. See your local Chevy dealer today. It is a 7-7 ball game. The Pittsburgh punt went into the end zone, but after the play was over, a penalty on Pittsburgh for unsportsmanlike conduct brings it back out to the 35-yard line and a rocky start so far for this hooky offense. Yeah, they, they seem like they just haven't gotten any kind of rhythm going. I think the injury to, to Witten kind of shook this team up a little bit. And they need to get the rhythm going, and obviously they need to get their, their hallmark. They need to get the run game going. Ferguson the fullback, Brunel is the tailback. The two wide receivers are split far side. They have not really gotten Davis involved in this offense so far. Brunel will get two, maybe three yards. He gets across the 35 to near the 37 before he's brought down. You see Panko sticking his head in there along with Claude Harriet, one of the defensive tackles. I take a good look at it, you know what's going on between the tackles, and you, you see a lot of Virginia Tech guys standing up tall. You don't see them driving out. You don't see those those helmets down and driving off the football. You see them kind of raising up. Not sure what the blocking scheme was, but these guys have to start to explode off the football and start to move. Pit. Give a lot of credit to the Pittsburgh defense. They played very tough between the tackles. Second down and seven. Ball near the 38-yard line, out of the shotgun. No waits. Now runs away from the pressure. Hit and throws incomplete. 
The ball fell harmlessly at the 40 yard line as Gerald Hayes, number 51, the middle linebacker, coming up to apply the pressure. Gerald Hayes has played outstanding so far in this football game. He's been all over the field. And Noel is looking and looking and looking. That's a coverage sack. That, things were going on down the field that didn't give Noel any place to go with the football. Hokies will stay in the shotgun formation. They are 0 for 3 on third down. This is third and 7. 7-7 seven, seven ball game early on here in the second quarter. Down the middle intended for Davis incomplete. Williams one of the linebackers is there on the coverage for Pittsburgh but it is a fourth down and the Panthers who dominated time of possession will get it back again. And Pittsburgh is doing things defensively that is confusing. No at the, at the they're buzzing the linebackers underneath Davis that time. That was Williams, the outside linebacker, who was all the way in the secondary underneath Davis. That is four consecutive three and outs for the Hokie offense. Good pressure again by Pittsburgh. Bryant will come up, let it bounce, and it takes a little bit of a Pittsburgh bounce and then rolls dead. It is pushed back inside the 25-yard line. Flags come down as the Hokies pick it up. And take it into the end zone. Austin and wind up with the football, but let's wait and see what the call is. Yeah, that's going to be a penalty against D'Angelo Hall, who, who threw Bryant down to the ground. Bryant was away from the play. Now this crew should know each other very well. The many conversations <laughs> they've had so far. They're they making, have been busy. They're making dinner plans already. The call will go against Virginia Tech, so another penalty against the Hokies. And this is a freshman mistake by Hall. He's got to get away from the play. The ball was touched by Virginia Tech. And that's Hall up there to the top, top right of the screen. And Ben Taylor tried to, to <laughs> Ben Taylor tried to hit Bryant with the ball. So Frank Beamer talking to D'Angelo Hall who's been playing the last four or five weeks with a broken hand. It is the fifth penalty called against the Hokies Don and they've all been 15 yard penalties. And they and they've been a lot of mental errors. This is a mental error. On the part of D'Angelo Hall he has to understand that He's got to get away follow the ball in special teams follow the ball stay away from the guys who don't have the ball. Now Eugene Sterritor is earning his money. Unnecessary roughness. He's our, he is our 15 yard penalty tonight. from the end of the kick. First down. So a 15 yard penalty will help out the Panthers with their field position. And I think Frank wants a further explanation. He's not going to get. What a disruptive start if you're Virginia Tech after the disappointment of last week and nothing is going right so far today. They, they really haven't gotten back into the old Virginia Tech style of football. And, and Frank is looking for an explanation. I think he's getting a little frustrated with, with the calls, but he has to say his, his team is not playing disciplined football. And that's what, what Frank, team, Frank Beamer teams have been known to play as disciplined football. And I don't think the call is so much that that Hall, D'Angelo Hall pushed him or touched him, it's that he threw him to the ground that you get the unsportsmanlike penalty. Well, the conversations continue on the far side of the field and in the center of the field between the officials on this crew. And they are being tested early on. And we saw what happened when we saw the replay. He simply picked him up, watch him chase him down, spin him, and throw him to the ground. That was the call. Maybe one of the questions they're trying to determine is exactly where the football was and where the it's going to eventually wind up when it's marched off. I mean, I don't know. Exactly. And the other thing that happened was that Ben Taylor came and swatted the ball and pushed the ball about about another six or seven yards. So they're trying to determine where Ben Taylor was and then also where the penalty occurred. It's a good thing we started this game at noon. <laughs> And that there's no rush hour on Saturday. <laughs> well, the conversation has ended. Gene Steratore has made the call. 
And it's going to be at the 31 yard line of first and 10. I'm not sure what the Panther fans are moaning about because they got the, the benefit there as far as field position is concerned. Frank Beamer knew I mean, he had penciled this game in early on and looking at the schedule as one that was going to be very tough and Pittsburgh has been very tough so far. Kirkley and Polite are the running backs in the eye. That's Polite the fullback. He'll grind it forward for a couple of yards and that's all. Monroe made the tackle. Gain of maybe a yard. It'll be second down and nine. One of the few running plays on first down by Pittsburgh, and I would expect them to start to run the ball more on first down. They were throwing it very consistently on first down in the first quarter. They'll start to run the ball now. They try to bring those linebackers back inside, soften up the coverage, bring the linebackers back into the box. Third game in a row now that the Panthers have gone with a huddle with their offensive unit, which Priestley has made no bones about. He likes it a lot better. He said, I like to look them in the eye, talk to them personally. Sets, looks, throws, pass complete. Bryant has it to 40. He wind up at about the 43-yard line. It was Taylor and Whitaker, the first there for the Hokies. It is a first down for Pittsburgh. So far, Bryant is winning the battle against Whitaker. Makes a nice step move to the outside. Gets Whitaker turned around. That first, first contact, they say, always wins for a wideout. Made a nice move on Whitaker, got him turned around. And then made his move to the inside. Well, the one thing that you'll see Antonio Bryant try to do every time he catches it, he likes to maybe release a step and try to look to make more yards. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's a first down here after a 10 yard pickup. There's that quick pass in the flat. English. He's got about eight yards. He gets inside the 50 yard line. Wilds made the tackle defensively. Priestley and English very good in teaming up in that pass in the flat so far today. They are doing a good job of keeping these corners active. Remember that they only dressed, Virginia Tech only brought four corners with them. So Pittsburgh is challenging these guys early on in the ball game. It's, it's going it's to take its toll in the second half. Ball nudging inside the 52nd down and about two, 7 7 ball game. But the Panthers have control time of possession so far today. Kirkley will head down looking for a first down. Murphy's going to come up just a little bit short. We'll see exactly where they mark it. Not much there. Clock running, 11 minutes to play first half, and it has been a lengthy first half with all the injuries and the penalty flags. And we'll have more delay as they decide to measure. This was kind of the story last week, too, for Tech. They got off to a very sluggish start offensively in the first quarter of that game. They wound up going against the win, fell behind 14 0, and never really recovered. And again today, a slow start for their offense. Yeah, and you mentioned the win. I think that was a, it was a big factor for them. When they had the win, they weren't able to take advantage of it. This pitch just has inches to go for their first down. And when, when they didn't take advantage of the win when they had it, I think this team got a little demoralized. They haven't really had to play catch up football very often. And, and you really find out what your team is like when you're, when you're placed in situations that, you, that you're not used to. Now the Panthers have not converted on third down either. Rutherford, who usually comes in on goal line situations or short down situations because he's more of a running quarterback and he comes on for the Panthers. He's a big kid, too. 6-3, a sophomore from Perry High School here in Pittsburgh. And he just follows the block of his tailback and will pick up the first down. Took the ball out of the midsection of Kirkley and gets the first down for Pittsburgh as House Wright and Jackson. The linebackers make the tackle for the Hokies, but the Panthers will keep the chains moving. You know, with so many false starts so far for, for Pittsburgh, I'm surprised they actually went to Rutherford because you, you, you already have a problem with Priestley and his offensive line jumping off sides. It'll be at the 46 yard line at first and 10, a sun drenched Heinz Field. Beautiful new facility with all natural turf, which, by the way, is heated in case it gets a little cool. It's not a problem today with the temperature around 60. Priestley play action fires and it's caught inside the 35 to the 33 yard line and he rifled that football in there to Antonio Bryant Whitaker and House right there but he gunned it to him that time that was an outstanding play by David Pussy hanging in the pocket you look at this battle that's going on all day these guys are battling on the corner I love it and that ball was perfectly thrown 
that enabled Bryant to just roll right over the ball and protect the football. 13 yard pickup. It goes down to the 33 yard line. A look at those numbers, including today in his career against Tech. He has just been a real pain for the Hokies. You wonder why Frank Beamer was nervous about this ball game. No, maybe you don't wonder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> First and ten. Priestley again looks long for English. He's got it. Five touchdown, Pittsburgh. English won the battle. Locked up against Wilds. A 33-yard touchdown strike. The second touchdown pass for Priestley. And Pittsburgh is back on top. That was in the air for a long time. It was just a matter of time before Priestley was going to get that rhythm deep. And English is working on, on Wilds. kick. Panthers trying to go back up by seven. And that's the first touchdown scored against Tech in the second quarter this year. They had given up just the three-point field goal last week to Syracuse. That came late in the first half after the blocked kick. But here it's English with a touchdown. So English gets the TD for Pittsburgh. It is his fourth touchdown of the year. The Panthers on top by seven. The bow. Resistance becomes strength. Becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gym and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. that Commonwealth Court affects your life more than any other court? My background and experience uniquely qualifies me to serve you on this court. Please vote on November the 6th. Thank you. Panthers leading 14-7, 9.48 to play. We're still in the first half. Richard Johnson will be deep. Number 12 is the fourth touchdown catch of the year for English. This is the guy that years ago was a walk-on. Earned his scholarship. The Panthers go 69 yards in three minutes and eight seconds to regain the lead. Lots with the kick. Fielded at the eight-yard line. 15, 20, spins away and down at the 21-yard line. Oh, Hayes on the special teams. Let's go back, Don, and look at the touchdown pass. You know, John, David Prissy throws a nice football. He, he's been very patient in the pocket. He's taking the shots deep. He releases his ball on time. You see, just as soon as he got his shoulders around, he released the football. That gave English plenty of time to get position on Wilds and get separation and make the catch. And that little touch right at the end was enough to free him to make the catch. And, exactly. And, and while, when Wilds' head went up, it was too late. It's Jones now at tailback for the Hokies. Ferguson still the fullback. Virginia Tech down a touchdown. No looks, throws to the left side. The catch is made at the 30-yard line. It's Davis who made the catch, and Cox made the hit. Pick up of nine on the play. That's a little change up for Virginia Tech to throw the ball on first down. I like those routes early in the ball game. You have the receiver coming back to him. You can quarterback can see the numbers. Those are confident builders type type passes. And I think Virginia Tech needs to get to more of those types of plays right now. Second and short yardage from the 30. The Hokies with it down by seven. No rolls, throws. The catch is made out of the back. 
backfield by the fullback Ferguson. He's wrestled down as he gets across the first down marker and picks up a first down. Just the second of the first half for Virginia Tech. You know, we did a lot of talking about Ben Taylor and how he plays sideline to sideline, but Gerald Hayes has been outstanding for Pittsburgh so far, coming from the middle position and making a tackle on Ferguson in the open field, who's very tough to bring down. And he got some help that time from Ramon Walker. Now, we haven't called number 25 too many times so far, but we will, I guarantee you that. An outstanding free safety for Pittsburgh. Noel changes the play. First and 10, 35. Jones. Hit after a gain of about one, and he is being wrestled down by the center of that defense, led by Tyree Young. And let's check in once again with Greg. Well, John, the Pittsburgh defense is really playing some inspired ball, and defensive coordinator Paul Rhodes may have started it a couple weeks ago. He gave every member of his defense a hard hat. This hard hat, number 48, belongs to Lewis Moore, the linebacker. He said, guys, let's get back to what we're all about. Hard work. Let's punch the clock. Let's do a good job. And it looks like it's working. So far, you're right, Greg. As a matter of fact, the coaches wore those hard hats as well. That's so right. They wear them out to practice. The whole field was under construction. <laughs> Grant Noel throws on the move, almost intercepted. Spencer almost got there. It was intended for Pittsburgh native Bob Slokowski, number 87, the tight end. It was knocked away. Noel has to be a little careful not to force things. Got a little pressure. Nice move stepping up in the pocket. Got to be very careful with the football. They can't afford a turnover. And Spencer, the little corner battling the big tight end out there in the perimeter. Those tight ends might win between the tackles, but they have a tough go at it out there in the perimeter. Tech is yet to convert on third down. Third and nine, and this crowd of 50,000 really beginning to get in. Here comes the blitz from Walker. He got him. Ramon Walker. I told you you'd call his number. You called it. Ramon Walker is the free safety, and they brought him from depth. He timed out the snap count. It was on no before he could set his feet. Another punting situation for the Hokies. Have not really been able to sustain a drive, and Vinnie Burns is going to get overtime pay. Antonio Bryant at his own 30. Should be good field position. The left footer gets a nice kick away. Bryant comes up and takes a hit at the 39 yard line. And there are yellow flags everywhere. Now, the emotional Antonio Bryant was hit by D'Angelo Hall, the emotional D'Angelo Hall, and we mix it up a little bit. Well, D'Angelo Hall better hope he doesn't get ejected from this game. That was a blatant violation of the Halo rule. It's not just going to be a five-yarder. This is going to be a 15-yard penalty. I mean, he doesn't even break down. He doesn't break down his stride at all. He just plows right through Bryant. Well, the officials indicated that it was against Pittsburgh, but I don't think that's right. Well, there, there may be multiple flags because there may have been some, some fisticuffs going on afterwards. Personal foul. Contact. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty. First down. Another 15-yard penalty. That's the sixth 15-yard penalty against the Hokies. You add it up, that's a lot of yardage. 90 yards in penalties, and Pittsburgh leads by seven at home. New batteries. Liquid wrench. Autocraft battery cables. AC Delco alternators. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. You know, we can give you a free installation if you like. Sure. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Something should never come between two people. Least of all, their long distance service. That's why at Verizon, we keep it simple and straightforward. Take our timeless plan. You get the same flat rate anytime, any day, for all direct dial domestic long distance calls from Pennsylvania, with no monthly fees, no surprises. So you can call anyone and take all the time you want. 
And with all your Verizon local and long distance calls on one bill, it couldn't be any more convenient. Plus, you'll have one place to turn for customer service. Why not call 1-866-525-5700 today to sign up for the timeless plan? Because nothing should stand in the way of what you want to do. Nice talking with you, Marion. Lovely talking to you, Eric. It's your life. It's your call. Verizon. Now, Paul Rhodes is inspiring his defensive unit. And that's Ponko there, and he's done a great job in the first half. Uh, this game today is being brought to you by Prudential Financial. Growing and protecting your wealth. And it's a beautiful day on the water. Where the Allegheny and the Monongahela come together to form the Ohio, right? Yes. <laughs> so I want to see if you were paying I, attention. I, I know storms. <laughs> Good field position for the Panthers. They'll have the ball at the 46 of Virginia Tech. We talked about Ramon Walker. When he gets himself in motion and he can get himself pumped up, he is a human dynamo. The offense has been productive so far. Two touchdown passes for Priestley as they give to Kirkley the tailback. Spins his way inside the 40 down to about the 38-yard line. A gain of about eight. The Panthers continue to pound away, and now that running game beginning to work a little bit better. Yeah, and, and that right there was, was what they call a tendency buster. They run the ball on first down with the tailback. A few other times they run the ball on first down, it's gone to the fullback. Lamar Cobb, one of the defensive ends, made the tackle. It'll be second down and short. The ball near the 37 of Virginia Tech. And the Panthers are testing this hokey defense this afternoon. Again, it's Kirkley. He's got a first down and more. Spins inside the 25 and leans for another Pittsburgh first down. Just a little bit of a delay, enough of a delay that time to open it up. Well, what Priestley did was he faked like he was going to throw that little bubble, that little short screen. And what that does is watch House right, right in the middle, number 41. He's going to start his shoulders out to the out to the sideline, and that gave the middle of the field to Kirkley. A 13-yard pickup for Kirkley, the freshman, inside the 25 at the 24, and the Panther fans enjoying this one so far. Bryant right, English left. Play fake to Kirkley. Looks one way, comes back for Bryant in the end zone, knocked away. That time Whitaker won the battle as he teamed up there with McAdam to knock it away. One thing Walt Harris said, the, the way that teams were kind of taking Bryant out of the game is not only are they double covering him, but they're playing him deep. He's got Whitaker underneath and McAdam deep over the top. So it really shrinks the, the amount of field that he has to work with that far into the end zone. Nice coverage. Second down, 10 at the 24. But this certainly will keep him loose. You go up top like that. That's right. And that's going to continue to open up that run game. Three wide outs in as Slade has joined this formation for the Panthers. They go with one running back and work out of the shotgun on second down and 10. Priestley with the pitch forward that time. The pass goes to Furman. Furman's going to lose yardage back outside the 25. That play always makes me cringe. I just don't like that ball being shoveled forward right there between the tackles. Too much going on. It'll be third down and 11 from the 25. We're in the final six minutes of the first half. Nothing has gone the way of Tech except for the block kick for a touchdown. Their offense has not gotten on track. They've been hurt by injuries and huge penalties, 90 yards in penalties. And it's shown they're playing very undisciplined football right now. Panthers have controlled the time of possession. You see English, the motion man, moving to the far side. Priestley steps up, throws, the pass is caught at the 15-yard line, trying to fight away from some traffic down there, pick up extra yardage, but the Panthers with a good gain on first down, and that's Lamar Slade. Wilds made the tackle, but the junior from Yorktown, Virginia. He and Kirkley are the two Virginia natives who play a lot for Pittsburgh, and you can bet he enjoyed that. It's going to be fourth and about a yard, and the Panthers will send the kicking team on. The fans always don want them to go for it, don't they? That's because their jobs aren't on the line. <laughs> Make sure there are no lollipops as they kick from the near hash mark. That's right. 
Lots had four field goals last week. This will be a 32 yard and make it a 33 yard attempt. The kick is up and the kick is good. So Lotz, who is a native of Ohio, adds to the Panther lead. They're up by 10 thanks to the 33 yard field goal, 17 7 Pittsburgh. Filter for when you feel the heat. Get refreshment down cold. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Forgot the pickles. tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires. Drive on. Lots with the field goal. Adding to the Pittsburgh lead. The Panthers held the football for almost three minutes. Went 31 yards. Had good field position and Lots will be kicking off. Andre Davis will be deep. For the Hokies who really need some kind of spark, Don. They, they do. They need something positive to happen. The only thing positive that, that, that happened in the special teams, they need to get it done with their offense. Does this look like a two and five team playing a six and one team? Absolutely. Well, yeah, it does, but it looks like Virginia Tech is the two and five team. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> it's been all Pittsburgh so far. Davis will watch this one sail out of bounds. And time to go down to the field once again. Greg Roberts. Greg. Hey, thanks, John. You know, Nick Lotz just nailed that field goal for Pittsburgh, and there were no lollipops on the field. But, you know, that's been some controversy in Blacksburg following their game with Syracuse. Now, I brought one of the dum-dums, and here's what was going on. Some people said, well, what were they doing? Did, did Virginia Tech allege they were shoving it in the ground and using it as a tee? No. What they thought the kicker was doing was using it as an alignment, kind of getting his direction, pointing, it, pointing the direction to where he needed to kick that field goal, where his foot needed to swing, Boom, keep your head down, kick that ball online, and they say it was aiding him in his field goals. Well, Bud Foster ran out and found a dumb dumb on the field, and the controversy rolls on. I beg to argue there are no dumb dumbs in Syracuse. <laughs> Here we go. First and ten. And the first man through is the tailback, Keith Burnell. And they don't even use dumb dumbs, that's right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> The drive starting at the 35 Burnell back out there. We've seen the freshman Kevin Jones briefly and of course Lee Suggs not part of this but they've got plenty of good running backs and what they've done at Tech is really establish a program that just keeps rebuilding year after year. He's got a couple of young running backs that he's redshirting and trying to decide exactly what he's going to do with them. Yeah everyone was talking about, uh, about Jones and he said I, I've got some other guys who are just as good behind him. It'll be second down and seven. The ball is short of the 39 yard line and Grant Knoll. He's going to go to his sideline and take a timeout. It'll come with three minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the first half. It's the first timeout taken by Virginia Tech, and each team has two remaining. Time now to look at the Army of One, brought to you by the United States Army. And here in Pittsburgh, it has been 25 years since they went undefeated, won the national championship, and the Heisman Trophy for Tony Dorsett. And Tony will join us at halftime. I'm looking forward to that. Quite a year, and of course, Tony, earlier today, officially, it was Tony Dorsett Drive just outside the stadium, named for him. 
You're, you're pretty big time when they name a street after you. I, I think that's, that's about right. as big as it gets. It doesn't get much bigger than that. His uniform, one of those, along with Dan Marino and others, that has been retired here. But Tony Dorsett, boy, he set all kinds of NCAA rushing records here with Pittsburgh. He's one of those guys who's just so much fun to watch. And they had those jerseys that kind of tore away back in the day. But he was one of those guys. We, we looked at some running, some running backs around the Big East. He's a guy that has the power and the speed to take it once he got up into the secondary to take it the distance. A Pittsburgh native, one of those honored today as they celebrate the 25th anniversary of that national championship. Here's a reverse to Davis. He has room. Closing down on him. He spins and fights his way for a couple of extra yards. Good quick reaction. Torrey Cox, number five, got there. It looked like it was set up, but the Panthers closed down quickly. They, they certainly did, and Torrey Cox stayed home, and the pursuit was able to catch up. Pittsburgh is playing very fast on defense. The Pittsburgh defense has allowed just 29 yards so far. And of course, with those sacks and in college football, that counts against your rushing yardage. That's the reason you come up with a minus 36. Both wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Tech is 0 for 5 on third down. It is Parham out there with Davis. There's pressure. The hit, the ball is loose. Pittsburgh has it. Can they recover it? Tried to pick it up instead of fall on it. And let's see if the Panthers did get it. They do. It's Pomko on the football, but it was Guzik who got there first. Noel had only one place to go. He was looking right all the way. He only had two receivers out in the pattern. Guzik makes a nice move on win, the tight end. The football was loose and Moore tried to pick it up. That was almost costly. He tries to pick it up, but the Panthers do get it back. And you see Ponko right at the bottom. He's not going to let anybody take that football from him. The first rule is fall on that football. Don't try to pick it up. Well, of course, Guzik ran one back 80 yards right. last week, so <laughs> they're getting a little greedy along that defensive line. A big break for the Panthers. They have it at the 31, first and 10. Just over two and a half minutes remaining first half and the Panthers are shocking the Hokies by 10. Hokies showing blitz. And the five yard penalty remains first down. The play clock winds down. And of course it was the Hokies in the closing seconds of the game in the first half last week who had their punter mishandled the snap wind right. up having a kick blocked and gave away the only points they had allowed in the second quarter now here today the Panthers have scored 10 points in the second quarter against Virginia Tech it's first and 15 all comes back to the 36 the Panthers have had the field position time of possession and the passing arm of Priestley looks long touchdown the second for Antonio Bryant he was all alone got behind wide and the Panthers through the air strike again. Wow. Unbelievable. And they love it at Heinz Field. Thirty six yards on the touchdown pass the third in the first half for Priestley. We mentioned the huge game he had two years ago against Tech. Terman did it last year. He was licking his chops just I said, when do you lick your chops? And he said, there are a lot of opportunities against Virginia Tech's defense. Flags down as the kick is blocked. And we have penalty flags everywhere. And finally, the scrum goes down at the two-yard line. The officials will sort this one out with 2.27 to go. Second touchdown pass today, sixth of his career for Antonio Bryant against Virginia Tech. This is something you just don't see from Virginia Tech. Them fall apart like this, especially on special teams. Ben Taylor, ben Taylor number four, is going to try to jump over the line before the snap of the football. Well, he was holding the ball. <laughs> he <laughs> he almost, was the holder. He was almost oh. able to get it right up the ground. It's 23 to 7. Priestley with his third first half touchdown pass. And I don't think 
think anyone expected this. Absolutely not. The PAT on the second try is good. And the Panthers add to their lead. Penalties certainly helped to set the Panthers up in good field position, and they take advantage, striking up top down the middle to Antonio Bryant. His fifth catch, he has almost 100 yards already. He's averaging 19 yards per catch and gets his second touchdown. And Bryant's in the middle there, just a little stutter move on Pyle, who's playing him inside out with Wilds on the outside, and he just splits him. They're able to get some mismatches in the secondary when they bring him, when they bring Bryant into the slot. Now, the quandary here for Tech, granted, you've still got two and a half minutes before halftime, but they have not been in this position before. They have given up, here in the second half, they've given up 17 points. And when we do get to halftime, we are going to have something special on our Discover Halftime Report. We'll have the Big East Wire and a special guest. I think we've already spoiled that. We know it's going to be Tony Dorsett who will join us. Stats and highlights, and I think shocking stats and highlights. This is a Tech team that had given up only three points in the second quarter the entire season. You know, this is a point in the game where I know that the head coach, Glenn Dreamer, has got to be thinking, you know, I just want to get my guys in the locker room, settle them down, and figure out where we go from here. They still have two, almost two and a half minutes left in this, in this half. They've got to get something done. They've got to get some, some continuity. Priestley already has 240 yards passing in this game, and there's Johnson with some room at the 20. Leans forward across the 20 to the 21-yard line, and that's where the Hokies will set up what could be their final possession of the opening half. Gilliard down on the special teams for Pittsburgh. Well, it'll be spotted at the 21. It'll be first down and 10. Johnson comes off. And the Hokies are not a team that's going to electrify you with big plays that's coming from behind. That's right. It's just not in their game plan. They, they have the players who can do it. Davis can take it the distance, but it's not in their game plan. Brunell and Ferguson are the running backs, and there's the quick out. It's incomplete. It was intended to Emmett Johnson, number 18. All smiles for Pittsburgh because they've got the 17-point lead here in the second quarter, and they've earned it. That time Young, the nose guard, got a nice hit on Noel after the throw. Clean shot. They're getting in Noel's face, and he's, he's been inaccurate so far with the football. Second down, 10 from the 20. Noel dumps it off. Burnell for about four. He gets to the 24. Finishing off the tackle is Mark Ponko, number 14. And the Hokies are hurrying now with two minutes left in the half. This is not that comfort zone. This is not what Virginia Tech likes to do. And they're really in the situation. Noel's pass is caught at the 35-yard line. It's the first catch of the day for Terrell Parham, his ninth catch of the year, and Virginia Tech continues to hurry. They'd like to get something on the board if they can before halftime. Yeah, they had two guys in the same area on that play. Davis was, still, was coming underneath Parham, and it looked like it was intended for Davis, but Parham was just right behind him. It is a completion. It is a first down, just short of the 35. Noel sets, fires down the middle, and incomplete. Intended for Davis. Ponko was there on the coverage. Not far away was Ramon Walker, and right now the belief is paying off for Pittsburgh. 24-7 with a minute and a half to go first half. That was a nice drive on the ball by Ponko. He sat and waited in coverage. He saw the ball released, and he came up and, and got there at the same time of the ball. Nice, nice drive on the football. Second down, 10. A minute 32 before halftime. Noel's pass is caught across the 45 at the 43. Once again, it is Davis. And coming up defensively on the play for the Panthers was Beinecke, the linebacker. Short of the first down, it'll be third and a couple. Tech trying to hurry here before halftime, working exclusively out of the no-huddle shotgun. Pressure from the outside, and the pass is caught. Davis with it. Knocked down at the 31-yard line by Ramon Walker. And Knowles is slow getting up. He calls a timeout. He, he got a little banged up on that last play. The Pittsburgh defense is hitting him every time he releases the football. 
They will attend to him during the timeout with exactly one minute remaining in the half. Grant Knowles standing in there. You can feel that pressure coming. He unloaded it. It wasn't a very good pass, but it got the job done. I think he was just trying to get rid of the football because he had pressure in his face, so he threw it early. And Davis makes a nice adjustment on, on the ball. He had this pressure coming right in his face. There's your man, Paco. The other thing you saw on that play, when Ramon Walker gets you around the legs, you're not going anywhere. Not going. That's right. <laughs> Six plays on this drive. They've covered 48 yards so far. They are trying desperately to make something happen before halftime. Grant Noel really got his first test under fire a week ago from an outstanding Syracuse team. And with a slow start for his offense, he's getting another test this afternoon because Pittsburgh's defense is playing with a lot of emotion. He certainly is. And, and here's the difference between Virginia Tech after Michael Vick. They don't have a guy who can spark a team, take something on his own shoulders. Grant Noel is a guy who plays within the system. He plays a very disciplined football, football game. And for Virginia Tech, it's not, their, it's not their style to try to make things happen, get crazy with the offense. They're very conservative, very consistent with their offense. But you know, sometimes the coaches say, now we do recognize the plays. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Noel is 8 of 15. He's been sacked twice so far today. Panthers sacked the Temple quarterback nine times last week. Noel gets this one away, and it's incomplete. Intended to Davis, took a hit from the missile man, Ramon Walker. It'll be second and ten. 57 seconds to go before halftime. And this is not what you would expect to see from Virginia Tech scrambling to throw passes in the closing seconds right. of the first half. They're very, very rarely in this position. An all out blitz. Intercepted. Cox with the interception. Corey Cox, it was intended for Parham, but Cox picks it off. The pressure by the Pittsburgh front has been in Knowles' face, causing him to overthrow balls, throw balls behind guys. He threw the last pass behind Davis, and this time the ball just sails on him. He's got something in his face. He's not stepping through the ball. Look, it's just a, it's just a duck there. Whack, whack. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> you know about those, I take it. <laughs> yeah, I've thrown a few of them. <laughs> Well, the celebration for Antonio Bryant's roommate, Torrey Cox, as he picks it off, and the Panthers now, I'm sure, will kill the final minute of this opening half. And they've got to be very satisfied with the dominating performance in the second quarter. They've scored 17 unanswered points here in the second quarter against the number one defense in the country. But for both of these teams, it was Pittsburgh's first win in the Big East last week, Virginia Tech's first loss, and they've continued to go in those directions. Had a lot of penalties, a lot of injuries early on to the Hokies of Virginia Tech. And those six 15-yard penalties against the Hokies have not helped this situation. Should be the final play of the opening half. A half dominated by Pittsburgh, both in time of possession and on the scoreboard. They'll mix it up a little bit inside. The officials will separate them. As we wind down the remaining seconds of the opening half. How about a hand for the Panthers in Pittsburgh? They are surprising the number 12 Hokies at halftime. 24-7 Pittsburgh. And both coaches are going to be happy to get their teams in the locker room. Of course, Walt Harris will be happy just to, to be in the locker room with the lead. And Frank Beamer has a lot to talk about with his group. Our halftime is coming up. We'll start by checking out the Big East Wire. The Wire here has Pittsburgh leading 24-7. Stay with us. Back to Heinz Field after this. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation. This football game. Six of the penalties charged against the Hokies were 15-yard penalties, resulting in 90 of those 95 yards. Two turnovers again. That tilts in the favor of the opposition. Second week in a row, that's happened to Virginia Tech. That's right. And with, with Pittsburgh getting 7.3 yards on first down, they can't afford to turn the ball over. The Panthers will be kicking off to start the third quarter of play. Nick Lotz will handle that. And now coming out on the field, the receiving team, and we're probably going to see uh, either Johnson 
or Davis deep and there's Bryant. Well he's made a living against Tech hasn't he in the well, last he, three years. He loves to see the Hokies come into town. He's caught five today now has six touchdown passes in his career. It is Andre Davis who will be deep. For Frank Beamer and Beamer ball has not been there again so far today. However it did produce their one touchdown on the block field goal it was turned the other way 72 yards and the quarter is underway and for the second time it's lots kicking it out of bounds so it'll be a 35 yard start for the Hokies and I think importantly for Frank Beamer now here in the third quarter they've got to make something happen offensively no question about it. I'm sure he went in there and tried to settle his team down in the locker room at the half and get them back to the, the type of football that they've played in the past. They have to get consistent and they have to start creating drives on offense. And the Panthers have struggled at home in the third quarter. In their last three home games in the third quarter, they have been outscored 45 to 7. So that'll be a key. We'll see if Beamer can keep that going. It's first and 10 from the 35 yard line, and it's Burnell. He'll get two, maybe three, and they grind him under. You saw Brian Knight number 57 at the bottom of the pile and getting some help from number 51 Gerald Hayes so it's a short gain of three. This is the type of offense though that the Hokies run they run the ground oriented offense they're not the time kind of team that strikes quickly right don't expect them to go to four wide and try to get back into this thing very quickly they're going to take their time and continue to play the patient football they always have. Four or five more across the 42 is Burnell. Still short of a first down. It'll be uh, about two and a half yards to go for the first down. We're in the first minute of the third quarter. Along with Greg Roberts, who's down on the field, handling, handling so far mostly the injury reports for the Hokies and Don McPherson. I'm John Sanders. It's third and short. Tech trying to get their opening drive off on the right foot. And Noel now changes the play. Burnell leans for the first. It's going to be close. Panthers trying to dig the football away from him, but he's going to be very close to a first down, maybe just a hair short. What do you do now? Well, I think they're definitely going to go for it. They're close. Their defense is has been able to play tough at times but you know around midfield I, I, I know what to call I like it. Eastlick has come on bringing in an extra fullback in this formation. Listen this is what Tech has to do they have a big strong offensive line if they can't get this they've got bigger problems than Pittsburgh. Power formation. First down. Leaning is Jarrett Ferguson, the fullback. He gets across the 45 to near the 46, and he has the first down. Boy, you kind of hold your breath if you're a Tech fan. You have to go for it on fourth down in the first possession of the second half. That, that's right. And like I said, if they don't get this, they've got bigger problems than just playing Pittsburgh today. They've got real problems with their offense if they can't get that, that, that play first drive in the second half. They'll be playing at Temple next week, then at Virginia on the 17th, and a little time to rest up before that big game against Miami at home on December 1st. That will be their final regular season home game, and Noel gets rid of it. He was under pressure that time from Brian Guzik, but he was able to force it upfield. A flag goes down. It's a holding call against the Hokies. i tell you, Brian Guzik, He's playing in place of Smith, who has the shoulder injury, but boy, the last two games he's been terrific. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Ten yard penalty. Replay. Play. First down. Yeah, Guzik has really stepped up with this opportunity to get, get some playing time today and has a sack, has a pressure. Well, I was kidding. E.J. Borghetti yesterday, the media relations director for the Panthers, that this guy was an 80 yard touchdown last week and everything he did, he should have been the defensive player of the week. He said, right. You got to politic better. First and 20. The freshman Jones catches the pass, fights his way across the 40 to about the 42 yard line. Walker and Hayes team up for the tackle. Just dump it in the flat to the freshman. Davis checks back in for Virginia Tech. Parham will leave. Hokies taking the opening kickoff. 
Two minutes and 40 seconds, 50 seconds rather, into the second half, trying to mount a drive. It's something they haven't been able to do all day. This will be second down. Remember, with the penalty, it's second down and 14. Here comes pressure. He moves away from it and hits his target. That's Davis. Davis with a catch gets into Pittsburgh territory on the first down. Spencer made the tackle, but he's near the 42, and that's a first down after a 17-yard hookup. And, and it's a good, good thing that Spencer made that tackle because Davis is so dangerous in the open field, and Ramon Walker came in on a safety blitz, so there was no one in the middle of the field, no one deep to help Spencer out, and if he doesn't make that play, Davis goes the distance. First and 10 for the Hokies. First possession, option play. He's the pitch and it's mishandled. This cost him a possession last week. As they turned it over to Syracuse on an option play. This time Jones was able to get on top of it before Ponco could get there. And yeah. Again, good job by Knight. And Knight slow plays no, so he doesn't get to his option key. And then Ponco comes from the secondary and gives him a pop. And that's why the ball went behind Jones on the pitch. Pittsburgh defense is playing with a lot more aggression than they've played in the past. It is. Like, like their offense, they threw some things out from the defense and simplified things and allow these guys to play a little bit faster. Maybe it's those hard hats they've been wearing in practice. That's right. Noel is going to keep it. 50. Puts his head down and gets back to the line of scrimmage before Knight decks him right there, number 57. And that is not what Grant Noel specializes in is running the football. He's not a Michael Vick in that area. And, and that helps the defense psychologically. They know that he's not going to take off and burn them for a 40 or 50 yard run. So psychologically, this defense knows they can pin their ears back in certain places and go after him. You know, if you're a Hokie fan, you think, hey, Michael Vick might have scored on that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but Michael Vick is not at Virginia Tech. Three wide outs, two to the near side, one to the far side. Out of the shotgun on third down and 10. Knowles pass. Intercepted and heading back the other way is Shante Spencer. He'll go for the touchdown. Spencer with a pick and a score. 68 yards. And it gets worse for the Hokies. Now Don McPherson, you talked about it. Out of the shotgun, wide open. That's not the style for the Hokies, and they pay the price. And that time, Noel threw into triple coverage. He had two receivers, but three defensive backs. He should have gone the other way with the football. He went into coverage and paid the price. The interception return by Spencer, his first. He gets it all the way into the end zone, and the Panthers looking for point number 31. knocks it through so even more work needs to be done by the Panthers keep in mind the Tech had the ball for over five minutes and the Panthers get the touchdown 949 to play in the third Pittsburgh 31 Virginia Tech 7 what is the calculation 89.3 degrees excellent It seems Germany's got a taste for America. Backslide. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help. Your Discover card. Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com.
Touch-up paint. Oops. Bendix brakes. TRW tie rods. Rabbit's foot. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. First driving lesson. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. It seems Germany's got a taste for America. Bex Light. It is 31 to 7. That's Grant Knoll on the sidelines. And we'll see if we do see Randall come in here on this next possession for the Tech Hokies. There's the freshman loosening up. He is a true freshman. At this point, you say, absolutely. Give him a shot. And fielded by the short man at about the 11 yard line, banging his way out to about the 24 on the play. Is that was John Eastlick, the backup fullback. Grant Noll makes two mistakes on his, on his play. First thing, he stays to the field. He has a three on two over there. It's time to go the other way. The second thing is he's late with the throw. Spencer was playing high, was able to read his eyes, and was there before he even released the football. It is Grant Knoll, though, who comes out to start this possession at the 25-yard line. They burned over five minutes off the clock, and the opponents got a touchdown. That's 24 unanswered points for Pittsburgh. First and 10 for the Hokies. Knoll under pressure throws, and the catch is made by Davis. He tried to spin away from Cox, and coming over to help out on the play as Cox made the tackle. He got some help from Brian Beinecke. Not much gain, maybe a couple of yards, and that's it. It'll be second and eight. Clock running with nine minutes and 20 seconds to play third quarter. And if you're a Hokie fan, you've got to be in shock right now. And if you're Grand Noel, you've got to be in shock and in pain. He just took another shot from Harriet, the backup defensive end, at the end of that play. He's taking a lot of hits today. You see the shadows of Heinz Field. Just about splitting the offensive formation, and Noel again feels the heat, runs away, keeps the football. 30, 31 yard line. He was tripped down by Ramon Walker, and then coming up was Hayes to finish it off, but Beinecke there as well. Another update from that Big East game being played at the Orange Bowl today, and Miami has really opened it up. Big third quarter <laughs> for the Canes. The clouds must have cleared. <laughs> <laughs> the wake-up call arrived, and look at West Virginia against Rutgers. Wow. Boy, do the Mountaineers need that. They'll be playing Syracuse next week here in our Big East Game of the Week. Check your local listings. Virginia Tech 2 for 10 on third down. This is a third and three. The pass complete first down. Trying to spite his way for more yardage was Emmett Johnson in the arms of Walker, and not people, not many people get away from him, but it is a first down just short of the 40. First and 10, Virginia Tech. Talk about Grant Noll getting hit. He's taking a beating every time he releases the football. And the Panthers have been pretty good. Not, not a big hit by Hayes, but one that lets them know that every time you throw the ball, we're going to put you right on your butt. That's a little one arm put down right That's there. Right. Hello, get out of here. First and 10, 39 yard line. Burnell trying the sweep, and he'll get about two, maybe across the 40, and that is about it. We are in Heinz Field midway through this third quarter of play. Number 12, Virginia Tech being shocked right now by the Panthers of Pittsburgh. I'm John Sanders, Don McPherson up here with me, and Greg Roberts. Kept him busy in the first half working on all the injuries for the Virginia Tech Hokies, and it's just gotten worse. Second and nine. Holes pass. In, is incomplete. It bounced to Parham, and right there defensively was Spencer. You know what happens when you get hit, when you get hit, when you get hit every time you throw the football? You don't follow through, and you don't step into throws, and that's why that ball skipped to Parham. A little bit of a short arm, you're saying? Absolutely. You, you, you don't get that, that lead leg out there. You don't step into the throw. Two wide receivers coming to the bottom of the screen. That is Davis and Johnson. Remember, Witten broke his leg early in the ball game and left. He has not been back and probably is out for the year. No looks, throws, incomplete. 
intended for Davis. Hayes had the pressure on the quarterback, and Spencer had the defensive pressure. It's, it'll be Pittsburgh football as Antonio Bryant comes back on the field. And the Hokies unsuccessful again. Well, Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator for Pittsburgh, can be very pleased with the way his defense has played all day. He's an intense guy. We sat down with him yesterday, and he got a little bit animated when he started talking about his young nose guard, but very intense guy, and I'm sure he's very pleased with the way his guys are playing. They are flying around the football. A wobbly kick from Burns. It'll land short and get a little bit of a tech roll inside the 30 to the 29-yard line, so that's where the Panthers will have it. I think we have a roughing call. It's a 30 yard kick for Burns and there's the call. It goes against the Pittsburgh Panthers. That's not what you want from your coaching staff right at that point in the football game you're controlling things here. Right. You want to you want to start to play mistake free football when you have it. I don't think this was much of a penalty. Good acting job. Just a bit of a bump that time. That's a good acting job. Kick is away. Oh, running into the kicker, it'll still be fourth down. It's only a five yard penalty because it was not roughing the kicker. Might work out well for Antonio Bryant. Who knows? He gets another shot at it. Another Anytime he gets his hands on the football, you never know. That's right. And Burns has been kicking balls that are returnable. They're low, they're not very high, not a lot of hang time. Ryan has two touchdowns so far this afternoon. Priestley has thrown three. English has the other. Pittsburgh's defense on the interception by Spencer scoring a touchdown and a field goal. So the Panthers have done it just about every way possible, and they have scored the last 24 points in this game. It was 7 7 after one. He's going to run, and he's down. Well, the Panthers react to that. Making the tackle on the play was Gilliard. He's been all over the special teams. And so Pittsburgh with a golden chance to add to a 31 to 7 lead. We talked to some people from Virginia Tech before the game and, and, and heard that Frank Beamer was thinking about a fake, using a fake at some point during the day. They overload the right side. See how the right side is overloaded? So Burns reads that, but Gillier just makes a great, does a great job of keeping his head up and not taking that traditional angle towards the kicker, but coming up the field and making the tackle. Well, if he gets by Gillier, he might make the first down. Exactly. Let's go down once again to Greg on the sideline. John we're down by the Pittsburgh defensive bench and defensive coordinator Paul Rhodes. He is encouraging his defense. He has told them they are playing a whale of a ball game. Now their symbol is the hard hat, but their motto is 11 as one. He said, do your job. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Handle your assignment and play with poise and we'll put this one in the barn. They were his words. Well, they are putting it in the barn as far as tech is concerned. A light on the handoff up the middle down to the 25 yard line second and short and that good first down play continues for Pittsburgh here in the second half although this is the first time they've had the ball offensively they have seven points six and a half to play straight ahead running another first down what's that old expression they're not booing they're looing McAdam and Wilds made the tackle but all the success that Priestley has had through the air has really opened up that middle. It certainly has, especially those early passes to the outside. Those early short passes to English has spread the defense laterally up front. And right now, Pittsburgh is winning the battle up front and handing off the, to the big fullback. Well, anybody is polite again gets the football and is wrestled down as he gets inside the 10. Anybody that saw, say, Pittsburgh play against Syracuse here or at Boston College would say this is not even the same team. Everything is different from what they were doing a few weeks back. Yeah, and, and that Boston College game was really the turning point because they just, the Walt Harris had to go back a few years to a, a game against Notre Dame that they just flat out had the ball run down their throats, and, and Boston College did the same thing. Over 300 yards now for the Pittsburgh Panthers offensively, and they stay with what's working. And wrapping him up that time was Cobb. And Polite carrying for the third straight carry. It's going to be third down. Panthers trying to power this one in, and they would be content, obviously, if they could, to muscle it in. Take a little time off the clock. 
take some time off the clock. And you know, in, in the final analysis, football is still a tough guy game. And, and if you can go down the field and push the ball in here in your run game, give it to your fullback polite, that, that they're really going to prove that dominance on the field today. Third and short. Light has now carried seven times as he gets it again, and he's dragged down from behind. And the fans beginning to groan a little bit because you know they'd like to see the scoring machine continue for no, Pittsburgh. No, I'm telling you, they're not they're not booing, they're looing. <laughs> it's the old uh, Lou Pinella chant from Yankee Stadium years ago. They're not they're not booing, they're looing. And Lusaka Polite has carried every play in this drive for Pittsburgh. As we get the official measurement to see if Polite has enough for a first down. Is Lusaka. Polite's not a really good name for a fullback, but I'll tell you what, I'll remember him for one thing this year, and that was a game here. He, he put a block on Dwight Freeney that Dwight will not forget for a long time. And that's saying something for Dwight. He's he's a tough right. guy to block. I mean, the soccer polite just nailed him. He got some help in setting him up, off, obviously, from some of the other linemen, but polite really drilled Dwight Freeney. And that, remember, that game here ended Dwight's string of sacks. He did that's not right. have a sack in that game. Well, I know Walt Harris is going to talk about this drive to his team because what they have done in these few plays is establish some dominance on the offensive line against a very good defensive front. And again, it is straight ahead running by Lou Saka Polite. I wouldn't be surprised if they give it to him again. Well, why not? Let him take it in. Taylor and Cobb teaming up defensively. This has been a polite way that Pittsburgh's trying to stick it right to yeah, Virginia I was, Tech. I was really hoping you wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was avoiding you. You came all this way for that. <laughs> Just over four minutes left, third quarter. The Panthers trying to add to a 31 to 7 lead. And end of the end zone goes Rutherford in the goal line situations that's what Walt Harris likes to do so Rutherford takes it in and the Panthers add to their lead this is unbelievable it really is you know when people looked up last week and they saw that Syracuse Virginia Tech score a lot of people were shocked even in Syracuse right. had been playing some pretty good football a lot of people were shocked they are going to be blown away by this score. Well, I'll tell you what. The other thing is, you look at Pittsburgh and they say, okay, they finally stopped the losing streak, but everybody said, yeah, but you did that against Temple. Exactly. This is not Temple they're playing today. The extra point is good. 38-7. to seven. Do they like it? Rutherford gets the touchdown. Walt Harris likes it. The goal line play works for his backup quarterback. It's Pittsburgh 38-7. Pint breakup. So you finally dumped him. There's one brand of truck strong enough to carry the American spirit Chevrolet. And right now, get 0% financing on every new truck we build Silverado, Tall, Suburban, Trailblazer. The trucks behind a country that never quits. And you can own one, interest free. Keep America rolling. See your local Chevy dealer today. gets his sixth rushing touchdown of the year. Johnson is deep to receive the kick. Nick Lotz will kick it off. One thing uh, Nick has not done real well. He's avoided any runbacks. He's been kicking it out of bounds. That's right. 
And, and yet, Virginia Tech has been able to do nothing with that good field position. Well, their only touchdown was scored by the special teams. And Johnson will field it at the three yard line, 15. And down he goes, just shy of the 20. Put to the deck by Hayes. We will take another break here in Pittsburgh. Some of the folks are leaving. I guess they think their team has enough. It's been all Pittsburgh so far. It seems Germany's got a taste for America. Backslide. Think I love you. <laughs> Turtle Wax, Grizzly Grill Guards, Rancho Shocks. Gas Cans. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. We need some help. We need a lot of help. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. It seems Germany's got a taste for America. Backslide. Ugly, misleading political attacks are always wrong, and they should never be used in a campaign for Pennsylvania's Supreme Court. The Philadelphia Inquirer said of Michael Eakin, low road attacks waged on his behalf have marged Judge Eakin's standing. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette called the attacks vile, specious cheap shots. Both papers urged voters to reject these attacks and endorsed Pittsburgh's Kate Ford Elliott, calling her the superior candidate for a state's highest court. Pittsburgh's Kate Ford Elliott, a Supreme Court justice Pennsylvania can be proud of. Pittsburgh's lead is 38 to 7. At one point it was 7 to 7, and we'd like to take a moment now to thank our corporate partner, Cooper Tire. Proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. From the 19 yard line, and Grant Knoll is still the quarterback. Jones is the tailback. The backs are split in a passing formation, and it has come to that. Davis makes the catch. Maybe a little short of the first down, wrapped up by Beinecke, the linebacker, number 15. Clock is running. We're in the third quarter. Virginia Tech is going to a hurry up offense, and I don't blame him. I think you, you have to. You can't roll over here. You're a number, number 12 team in the nation. You, you still have to act like you're in this ball game. But you know, we get back to the fact that this, this is not the personality of this team. He dumps it off to Jones, and Jones can make some things happen. He goes down at the 35 yard and hit again by Beinecke making the tackle on the second straight play. It'll be a first down for the Hokies. Nice open field tackle by Beinecke, but I agree with you. It's, it's not in their game plan. It's not their style of offense. However, if you're, you're a team that's going to make a push for the national championship, you better have this type of hurry up, come back, come from behind offense in your arsenal. Well, of course, the problem is they rarely trail. Parham leading for that one, but it's incomplete at the 40 yard line. Spencer was there, but Noel again underthrows the pass. And Noel just not getting anything on the football, not throwing with a lot of confidence. Are you surprised that they haven't gone to Brian Randall yet? I am a little surprised that they haven't gone to Randall, but again, if they're in the hurry up offense now, they're thinking they have a full quarter left that they can get things together, but so far this game, they just have not played with any hope of, of a comeback. Here comes the blitz. And the catch made by Parham at the 40. It's short of a first down. He gets about five. And let's go down to the field. And Greg Roberts again. Greg. This is along the defensive front. Steve DeMossi, number 61, is the only returning starter. John, back to you for this play. All right, Greg. No sets, looks again, is pressured and overthrows Parham. Cox was the defender. Let's go back and let Greg finish his thought. Greg? Steve DeMossi is the only returning starter from last year's uh, starters. And they didn't just lose people, they lost good players. Dave Cadella started for Virginia Tech last year. He's with the Atlanta Falcons. Matt Lair was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. Anthony Lambeau signed with the Baltimore Ravens. And Josh Redding signed with the Indianapolis Colts. So let's just say they're probably new and somewhat inexperienced up front and they're paying the price for that this afternoon Pittsburgh playing inspired defense Antonio Bryant will feel this one it is 21 30 steps away from a couple of defenders and then is wrestled down 
pushed back inside the 25 yard line by Ben Taylor. Even if you're a starter, obviously for the Hokies, you're going to play some special teams for Frank Beamer, huh? Absolutely. And, and Ben Taylor, guys, one of the best linebackers, if not the best linebacker in the country, down there covering kicks. It is time now for We Know You. It's brought to you by Sitco. Proud to support today's athletes. And do they know Tony Saragusa? Do you, by the way? Oh, I know that, that, <laughs> that big, ugly guy pretty well. I played against him, and he was big, loud, and he nasty. Might be, he might be here someplace, huh? <laughs> Yeah, he might be actually. Yeah, the Ravens are in town for tomorrow night's game. Ball at the 21 yard line. First down 10 for Pittsburgh. Panthers have the ball. And again, it's polite. And the lose continue for Lusaka Polite. Coles Colas made the tackle for Virginia Tech. Colas made the tackle. And that clock is going to become the enemy of the Hokies in a hurry here. Especially if, if, if Polite is able to get the kind of yards he did inside the red zone last drive. They can establish this run game and keep pushing the ball up the middle. And if I'm Lusaka Polite, I'm thinking, you know, I did most of the work on that. And then you <laughs> hand it to the quarterback to score the touchdown. I didn't What's think that deal? was right either. <laughs> yeah. The rollout by Priestley. He'll slide down at the 40. Priestley. Kyle goes over the top of him. He's got a Panther first down at the 40. There's a good chance he's smiling right now because he doesn't get a chance to do that very often. He was wide open in space and did the right thing, the smart thing. Once he got the first down, was just slide on down, let that clock keep rolling. Of course, in college football, they, the clock stops so you can set the chains for the first down, but they'll get it going again. And this is the team coming off a bowl appearance. Even though they lost to Iowa State in the Inside.com Bowl, that had very high expectations, especially around the city of Pittsburgh. And when it got off to such a disastrous start, it's been a tough time getting it back. You know, Walt Harris tried to downplay that and say, you know, we weren't as, as good as people were saying we were. But if you look at their performance today, they, they definitely have the people to get it done. We have a penalty down as Kirkley took the handoff, but the play clock had expired. Five yard penalty remains first down. That's, that's what happens when when Priestley goes down the field and I think he was expecting a little bit more time on the clock because he got the first down. Maybe he was out of breath couldn't call the play. That's the other thing. <laughs> Minute 14 to play third quarter. It's all Panthers. They have scored 31 unanswered points. That's shocking. That really is shocking. It's first and 15. The ball moved back to the 35 yard line. And the field now pretty much completely in the shadows except for one strip right up the middle between the hash marks. It's a quick out pass. English makes the catch and he gets the five yards back but they lost on the penalty. Oh we've seen that play how many times today. And we said we would continue to see it until they covered it and that time the Angela Hall the young corner was way off of English giving him all kinds of room on the corner. Oh, English makes another catch. The Panther fans enjoying this one. That's eight catches for English in this game this afternoon. Wow. They've all been possession type passes except the touchdown. Exactly. And that touchdown was set up by those short little passes that he, he's been catching. Now they put Bryant and English wide to the right side. Play fake. Pressure and down he goes. Back inside the 30. He is wrestled down behind the line. Colas and Davis teaming up. It is the first sack of Priestley this afternoon. And it looked like a busted play. I wasn't sure if Priestley was supposed to hand that ball off or, or what, but it looked like he was going to foul the back up the hole, and then Colas was able to wrestle him down. But not, not the only positive play made by the Virginia Tech defense in some time. And the Panthers may not get this playoff before the third quarter ends. They will not. They're going to let the clock expire because they've got the lead. I don't blame them. 38 to 7, Pittsburgh. The fans come to their feet. The Panther fans are enjoying this one. It's been a while coming, but 38 7, Pittsburgh leading Tech. Oh, and then 
Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. Pay $79 per month or see your dealer for nothing down, no payments and no interest until April 2002. Welcome to the annual ESPN the Magazine Sports Mascot Picnic. Every year, pro and college mascots come from all over to talk about how much they love ESPN the Magazine and show off their free fleece pullovers. You know more mascots subscribe to ESPN the Magazine than any other sports magazine in the world? Hey, here's the college guys. Fellas, who's your ESPN the Magazine favorite? They're so into Dick Vitale. And every new subscriber gets this ESPN the Magazine fleece pullover absolutely free. These high quality fleece pullovers are extra large and roomy. Fits all shapes and sizes from devils to penguins. Subscribe now. Get 26 issues one year for just a dollar an issue. That's 71% off the new stand price. Hey, if you're a sports mascot or simply a regular human who loves sports, pick up the phone and call for ESPN the Magazine and your free fleece pullover. 1-800-659-5335. Verizon is now offering great rates on all direct dial long distance calls. So you can call Canada for just seven cents a minute. Call the UK for a mere nine cents a minute. Go ahead, call Italy for 15 cents a minute. Call all the way to Germany for just 15 cents a minute. But first, call 1 866 525 5800 to sign up for the Timeless International Plan. And take advantage of these great low rates with just a $3 monthly fee. That's 1 866 525 5800. Of course, you'll also enjoy a great 10 cent domestic rate right here in the good old US of A. These rates are good 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now that's long distance done right. Verizon. We are through three quarters, and it's Pittsburgh 38 to 7 over number 12, Virginia Tech. The Panthers have simply outplayed the Hokies from start to finish in this game. Look at the difference in some of the numbers through three quarters. Consider this the Panthers have punted once since the first quarter. It, it really is amazing. Virginia Tech has done absolutely nothing offensively. And the Panthers bring it out to the 40 yard line. That's Furman Marcus. He's another true freshman. He's from Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Well, Furman will hustle off. It will be a punting situation, and the Panthers wasting no time. They're going to kick it in a hurry. They did a, a quick, a quick set huddle for the punt. It's Davis back to receive at the 21-yard line. Starts to the right and goes down at the 24. So a return of about three. And the way it's going for Davis, he's not going to break that punt return record because the Panthers have not had to punt very often. 14-27 to go in the game. Pittsburgh 38, Tech 7. What is the calculation? 89.3 degrees. Excellent. It seems Germany's got a taste for America. Backslide. Two of ESPN Radio's Hands on the Heisman contest continues, and so far we don't see any quit in any of these contestants. <laughs> Except for me. They quit soon. 32 hours. This is amazing how long they can stand there, let alone stand with their legs, and then hang on to something as well. It's very impressive so far. I couldn't do this. It's not so much the endurance. It's the ability to withstand the boredom. <laughs> for a check of the ESPN Radio station near you, go to ESPNRadio.com. It seems Germany's got a taste for America. Backslide.
There's never been a better time to discover Niagara Falls, Ontario. But the falls are just the beginning. From the Great Gorge Adventure to the thrill of Casino Niagara, there's a Niagara Getaways package that's right for you from just $64 US per night. Call to book your Niagara trip today. Welcome back to Heinz Field, 38-7, 14-26 to play in the game. The Panthers have dominated this one. This is Brian Randall. The freshman leaping out to try to make the catch was Parham, and this is uncharted territory for Frank Beamer and the Hokies as far as losing two games in a row. And uh, that's the only time that Pittsburgh ever defeated Frank. But look at this for the Hokies 10 drives. This is their 11th. They've had four three and outs. Three were stopped by turnovers, and they punted seven times. The pop put on Randall as he goes down on his second play. He was hit by Williams. There are the numbers for Randall on the year. He played quite a bit in the very first game against UConn and hasn't seen that much playing time since. Yeah, and there was a lot of talk in that UConn game that, that Randall would be the guy by midseason, but Nolan has done an outstanding job of maintaining this offense. But right now, Randall's in a no win situation going deep. He airs that one out, and it's almost intercepted. Intended for Parham downfield, but there's Spencer who has an interception for a touchdown today already. So another three and out for the Hokies. Virginia Tech just looks hapless right now. They they don't they don't have the, the normal pace. They don't have any of the normal fire. Five times in 11 drives, they've been three and out. Antonio Bryant standing back at his own 35-yard line. So again, the Panthers will have good field position. It's an end over end tumbling kick and Bryant fields it at the 41 and he'll go down at about the 44 yard line. Antonio in no hurry to try to take any chances with that one. But we've talked a lot about the new facilities not only Heinz Field but also that new practice facility that they share on the south side with the Steelers. We asked Walt about that yesterday. Here's what he said. Our new facilities, I think, is going to give us uh, a better chance to uh, recruit a better brand of player and uh, give us a better chance to sell our program in a national way. Um, I think our facilities are second to none. Um, the fact that we have a beautiful place to work, but we also have the Pittsburgh Steelers right outside our windows is uh, truly um, unmatched anywhere in the United States. New quarterback is Rutherford on the keeper. Brought down as he gets across midfield to about the 49 yard line. McAdam was at the bottom of that pile. And when we got there for our meetings yesterday, Don, we looked out the window and there were the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, and I found it difficult to concentrate in a meeting when the Steelers are practicing right behind you. Imagine being one of these Pitt Panthers when you come to when you come to practice each day and you have the Pittsburgh Steelers right there. And I even asked David Priest who does it. Make you feel a little nervous? He said, nah, not really. But then when he started talking about skipping a pass or, or throwing a pass right on time, he knows that those guys are watching him. Now that's the other factor. They're not really scouting them, but with their offices, they have the same view of the pit practice field as Pittsburgh does of their practice field. So it goes both ways, and it is a tremendous facility. It'll be third down. Kirkley hit that time by Colas. Walt Harris got to be enjoying this one. The Panthers in good position for their second win in a row, third on the season. It really, really is a unique situation with the schools that are in the same city as pro franchises. You want to take advantage of that in some way in recruiting and what have you, but this is just such a tremendous situation for the Panthers. Here's Rutherford under pressure, and down he goes back at the 40 yard line. Snowed under that time. Leading the way, Taylor Housewright was there. It might be too little, too late for the Hokies. They're going to get the football back, but they need some kind of an explosion. Might start here by trying to block a kick, but Pitt's trying to hurry and get it off before they can get set. Yeah, that's why they're doing that. They don't want to give them a chance to, to get a line on it. A tumbling kick again. Davis comes up, feels it at the 24. Starts to the right, 35, 40. Cuts it back. Down he goes at the 48-yard line. Nice return of 24 yards for Davis, but a lot of work remaining for the Hokies. The Panthers lead it 38 to 7, just over 12 minutes left in this one. I was looking to protect what I have and to achieve some modest growth. I knew I lacked investment skills 
and I knew I needed professional assistance. Prudential gave me a good feeling that this guy or these people don't have an agenda of their own. There's a lot that I don't understand, but that's why I really lean more heavily on my advisor at Prudential. I'm impressed by their thoroughness, and I'm impressed by their detail. I think I found the right people. New batteries. Liquid wrench. Autocraft battery cables. AC Delco alternators. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. You know, we can give you a free installation if you like. Sure. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. It's Christmas at Pool City with savings of 40 to 70% off. Get a 7-foot pre-lit tree for only $79. Our 32-inch fiber optic candle tree is just $19.99. Get 100 icicle lights for only 99 cents. Our 48-inch lighted reindeer is just $19.99. A 7-foot spiral tree, just $29.99. And that's not all. Get 25 outdoor lights for just $3.99. Get a beautiful 6-foot tree for only $17. You'll get 40 to 70% off all Christmas items. And for a limited time, all ornaments are buy one, get one free. Only at Pool City. The Gateway Clipper Fleet shuttle already scurrying passengers out of here. It's 38-7 Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at our Beck's Beer Game Summary quickly here as we wind this one down. You know, it's just which one do you point out? It's just been right. an outstanding day for David Priestley and a miserable day for Virginia Tech. Quarterback draw about a yard and that's all. Really Panthers had the answer for that one. Randall the freshman. Williams again tripped him up. Brandon Williams and Tyree Young. I would think this is going to be a real confidence booster for this entire Pittsburgh program, don't you? No, no question about it. These guys have already gained a tremendous amount of confidence against Temple after they cut things down both on offense and defense. And Catch is made out there Randall's by number 19, the Grant Wilford. Cox wraps him up short of the first down. The Panthers will be playing at Rutgers next week. And then they'll play at West Virginia on the 24th, the weekend after Thanksgiving. And then they'll make up the game against UAB here at Heinz Field on December 1st. That's the same day that the Hokies will be playing Miami at Lane Stadium, Worsham Field. That pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And I guess the question now for Frank Beamer and his coaches. After two weeks in a row of this, uh, how do you regroup and recover knowing that you've got games on the road at Temple and Virginia before you host Miami? Well, they felt very good coming out of the Syracuse game. They didn't feel like they played well, uh, but they felt like they had a, a handle on it and they could, they could settle this team down. I think right now you're going to find out what kind of coach Frank Beamer is because this is going to be as much as this is a confidence booster for Pittsburgh. This is a demoralizing loss for Virginia Tech. Third time the Hokies have had to go for it on fourth down. They've made it once. Out of the power formation and there's movement on the left side. And jumping off was Davis. Snap, snap. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. So it is still fourth down. 110 yards in penalties now, Don, against the Hokies. And they change. They go back to the punt. That brings Antonio Bryant back onto the field. He has a pair of touchdowns today. Vinny Burns again will kick. And again, flags come down. We're reverting to the first quarter with all these yellow flags. Yep, that's going to go against the center. He grabbed that ball and just flinched with the ball. Dead ball. Illegal snap on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. The guy's gonna go home and his kids are gonna say, Daddy, we saw you on TV a lot today. 38-7. Pittsburgh leading Virginia Tech. Antonio Bryant coming up to field this one at the 23 yard line and Antonio slips Bryant. down there. That's where the Panthers will take over with 11.02 to go. And if you talked about this game prior to the start with the Hokies about 18 and a half points favorites and you said well it's the fourth quarter 11 minutes to go and one team is winning 38 to 7 <laughs> you would not think it would be Pittsburgh would you. Absolutely. But not. it is. 
and they've earned it. And I think a lot of people were, were thinking it would be the other way around because of last week's loss to Syracuse, that, that, that Virginia Tech would get it together and that they would come out with some fire and that they would you know, just reestablish them, themselves as one of the better teams in the nation. Instead, it's just been nothing but Pittsburgh dominating in this football game. And it's Rutherford who's going to be tackled for a loss. Cobb has him around the legs, and we go back to the field, and Greg Roberts, Greg. Pittsburgh passing attack, but today was especially tough because Tech's cornerbacks weren't full speed. You're looking at D'Angelo Hall. He's a true freshman, a backup corner. He rolled his ankle on Wednesday, left the practice, and he's already playing with a broken hand. So he's a little gimpy out there. Also, Larry Austin, their starting corner. Three weeks ago, he had knee surgery. Backup Eric Green didn't even make the trip. He didn't practice all week because of tonsillitis. And then Garnell Wilds, the fifth corner, has been forced into action all afternoon. Pretty much up there five corners only one is at full speed and that's Ronnie Whitaker he dropped the ball is it an incomplete pass I think it is they will wave it off it goes as an incomplete pass to Bynes as the Panthers go deep into their wide receiver list with a comfortable lead here you know, Greg talks about the injuries and certainly they were a factor early on but you just can't point to the injuries as the reason that the Hokies are trailing nor do I think that Frank Beamer will do that I think he'll he'll say yes we were banged up but uh, to get beat this badly against a team that quite frankly has not gotten it done all year long is something else going on it, it, with Virginia Tech right now. Frank Beam's going to have to figure it out and address it quickly. Third down 15 Rutherford from the shotgun. It's a quarterback draw 25 30 first down across the 35 to the 37 yard line. That's the one weapon that he has that Priestley does not have. They can run that kind of play. It was Taylor and D'Angelo Hall who finally made the tackle. If you go back to the play before, Rutherford threw a nice ball into coverage, but threw a nice ball down the field to Bynes and had some zip on it, and then he shows nice burst there. 18-yard pickup. He has scored a touchdown this afternoon as well. The ball is spotted at the 37. It's first down 10. Panthers grinding the clock now, under 10 minutes remaining. And uh, the penalty is going to go against Pittsburgh, I believe, or no? Might be another delay of game. This is good experience for Rutherford, even though that they're up big and, and Virginia Tech's not playing that well. They're still the number 12 team in the nation. They're still the team that, for the last 10 years, a dead ball, disconcerting signal on the defense, five-yard penalty. Now that's an unusual Remains call. First down. <laughs> Disconcerting signal. This is like an Ivy League game. <laughs> it's a perplexing situation. <laughs> disconcerting signal. Hmm. Now the whole thing's been disconcerting for that guy. <laughs> Frank said, "Disconcerting." I'll tell you about this. Yeah, I got your disconcerting <laughs> right, right here. <laughs> first and five. Lefty guns it, but he guns it to the wrong guy, and the Hokies come out of there with it. D'Angelo Hall with the interception at the 40, still on his feet, still fighting for yardage, and down he goes. All the way down to the 25-yard line of Pittsburgh as the Panthers turn it over for the first time. And that's what I was talking about for, for, for Rutherford. This is good work. They're still, again, the number 12 team in the nation. You, you can't afford to make, make those mistakes, even though they're not playing that, that well. And he has to do the little things right. And this time he just lets his ball sail on him. Again, thrown to the right for a left-handed quarterback. He's got to get his shoulders around and see the field. And he was nowhere close to Bynes on that play. He's got to get his shoulders around, going to the left, excuse me, going to the right, and see the whole field. It's a nice return of 34 yards. Brings the ball down to the 25, first and 10. The Hokies trying to strike quickly. Still nine minutes plus remaining in this game. Jones. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He's wrestled down. Guzik was there. Moore was there. I tell you what, Brian Guzik is having a heck of a run right now, isn't he? He certainly is. He, he and the rest of the defense have been swarming all day long. But Guzik and Hayes have been just outstanding. It is second down and 11. And 
Taylor with the quick throw and the catch made at the 20. Fighting forward down to about the 17 is Andre Davis. Let's check some other scores. It is over at the Orange Bowl. 38 nothing. Miami remains undefeated and West Virginia. Wow. Romping in Morgantown over Rutgers 59 to nothing. Second half just started. Wow. That could be a record breaker the way that one's going. Goodness gracious. Uncle. Paul Uncle. Eight minutes to go here. 38 7 Pittsburgh. The Panthers have scored the last 31 points. Keep in mind the tech offense has not scored, and there's a handoff to the fullback, Wayne Briggs, who's getting some playing time. In the updated standings in the Big East Conference, it is Miami and Syracuse, both at 4-0, and, oh, and Syracuse winners of seven consecutive games. Virginia Tech is about to fall to 3-2, and two, and Pittsburgh go to 2-3. and three. All of a sudden, Boston College is the number three team in the league. Looking for the end zone, overthrows Davis. Spencer was there defensively. It'll be Pittsburgh ball. The Panthers will get it back with 7.24 remaining at Hines Field. It's been all Pittsburgh, 38 to 7. Dealer for nothing down, no payments, and no interest until April 2002. <laughs> Cooper Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires. Drive on. There's got to be a better way to get to Salt Lake City. And now with Verizon, there is. Every time you make a long-distance call or use these Verizon services, you're entered to win a trip for two to see the USA National Luge Team compete. Don't have Verizon long distance yet? Just call to sign up. But hurry, your chance to win ends soon. Verizon. This game is brought to you by Bex Light, Germany's lighter side. By Sitco. At Sitco, we enjoy football as much as you do. Sitco, we know you. Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. The United States Army, an army of one. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. If you're Walt Harris, this is the kind of game that you've been waiting for. Absolutely, because, you you know, he really just wants to look his guys in the face and see a smile come back from under the helmet. And that's so gratifying after such a tough season they've had so far. Rutherford now the quarterback changing the play. It was a good afternoon for Priestley. And the one thing you know about Virginia Tech, they will remember these Pittsburgh quarterbacks breaking it out is Furman. Finally down as it gets across the 45 to the 46 yard line. A terrific run by Marcus Furman, who had carried the football only 10 times prior to today, and he picks up 29 yards on that one. Yeah, he's not, not a very big guy in Furman, but he's very fast and did a nice job once he got some yardage to come back inside and keep the clock running. Winding down towards seven minutes remaining fourth quarter. Remember this game was 7-7. But you also remember the Tech in 13 possessions, seven times they've been three and out. That's not going to get it done. And certainly the Panthers have taken advantage of three turnovers. With the option play. And Rutherford will get a yard, maybe two, before being tripped up by Channing Reed. Mention Tech while on offense, Virginia Tech in 59 plays, 40 of them with three yards or less. Mm. And you 
can't say it's all their fault. You've got to credit Pittsburgh's defense. A, a, absolutely. Pittsburgh's defense has been swarming. They've been aggressive. They've mixed the blitz with, with, with just some good, solid yeah. play up front. And you know, Paul Rhodes all year long has been waiting for the defense to play the way they did last right. year. And he's found it the last two weeks. Straight ahead power running by Joe Valia, the backup fullback. D'Angelo Hall made the tackle, but there's Valia. He is from Apollo, PA, Kiski area high school. And of course, the Western Pennsylvania football, a rich tradition here in Don. All the playoffs started last night for the area schools in the WPIL. This is football country, boy. They love it. Hopewell High School produced Tony Dorsett, and uh, they have renamed the stadium Tony Dorsett Stadium in addition to Tony Dorsett Drive. He's telling us he might have to come back and run for mayor. Right. <laughs> Move back from Dallas. Another first down for Pittsburgh. Furman picks his way to the 40. Housewright made the tackle for Virginia Tech. Yeah. Right. You can look at this game, you can look at the injuries, the turnovers, and the things, but Pittsburgh just lined up and beat them this Absolutely. Season. Pittsburgh has done an outstanding job. You can, you can talk about tech falling apart, but when you call, you know, House Wright, you know, they, they've got some talent. There's Willie Pyle, the free safety. They've got some talent on this ball club, and, and Pittsburgh has just been relentless. They took it to them early, and they've kept up the pressure all game long. Well, the Panthers are in some uncharted waters here with this game this afternoon. First and ten at the 40. Keeping it on the ground, using the clock. The last time the Panthers beat a ranked team was Virginia Tech. It was here in Pittsburgh in 1997. And this could be the highest ranked team the Panthers have beaten since they knocked off number 10 Syracuse in 1989. How about that? Wow. I wasn't there. I it wasn't your fault then. I wasn't that You had nothing to do with it. <laughs> there were no ducks or anything from you no that ducks, day. That's right. <laughs> How about Virginia Tech? Today, the last two years against the Panthers, they gained 578 yards rushing. That's 289 yards a game. Today, the net is a plus three. That's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. There's one guy that enjoys it. He plays with a fire and with a passion, and he knows all eyes are on him. And he responded today with two touchdown catches. It'll be third down and 11 at the 41. And even when Antonio's not in the game, and sometimes he gets a little headstrong and winds up standing next to Walt Harris, uh, he never gets out of the game. He cheers his teammates on. He is as intense a person as you'll ever see. Yep. Rutherford was trying to follow the block of his fullback Joe Valia. He goes down at the 40 and it's 38 to 7. The Panthers are comfortably in front. We are in brand new Heinz Field in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Big East football and there's nothing wrong with your television set. The score is right. 38 to 7 Pittsburgh is leading. The Panthers getting ready to punt something they have not had to do very much today. They have dominated this game from the beginning. And we have an injured player as Kolos will be helped off the field. That's the reason that the clock has been stopped with 3.02 to play. This game was tied 7-7 after the first quarter, but Virginia Tech's only touchdown came on a blocked kick and a return by Whitaker, a 72-yard return. The Panthers had a interception for a touchdown themselves. They've taken advantage of the Tech mistakes, and they have dominated the game. They really Recently have. was terrific this afternoon. They have. Virginia Tech has not played with their, with their normal aggressive style of play and, and consistent style of play offensively, but, but put, give a lot of credit to Pittsburgh. They have played an outstanding football game in all phases. Let the clock run down as far as they can. And the Panthers had this one well covered. It does take a bit of a tech bounce and goes to the 15 where the Hokies will have it with 242 to play and an appreciative crowd of over 50,000, although a lot of them have headed home deciding to beat the traffic. Michael Harris has been 
more a cheerleader than a coach today. He's seen most of the things go right. The one thing it didn't was that blocked kick. Everything else has gone the Panthers' way. And, and you get the sense talking to Walt Harris yesterday that, that he was a little beleaguered and the, and the Temple win was was a huge weight off of his shoulders. And, and this win could not be better for him. It could not come in a better time for Walt Harris. He's get a chance again to see those smiles under the helmet. I'm sure it feels great for him. Great for him this afternoon. And the Panthers close to 400 yards in offense. It's about a seven or eight yard gain. The ball pops loose. And let's say who has it. It looks like the Panthers get another turnover. That'll be the fourth. So Pittsburgh will get it back again. Well, it's gone from bad to worse for Frank Beamer and the Hokies today. And that face right there will say it all. It has just been one of those afternoons for Virginia Tech where nothing has gone right for them. They've had injuries, they've had turnovers. And we do have another Hokie player down on the field. Well, the Panthers come up with the fumble recovery by Hayes. Ward was the player that carried the ball and lost it. So Pittsburgh will get it at the 18 yard line of Virginia Tech. They start to come back on the field, but in the meantime, we've got to help Wilford up and get him off. First and ten. It'll be first down, Panthers. At the end of the first half, I was saying that Frank Beamer would just want to get his team into the locker room and regroup and try to settle them down. And well, the now, bad news is things didn't get better in the second half. That's right. Now he's thinking, just warm up the bus. Let's get out of town. Just the second win for Pittsburgh against Virginia Tech. Here's Rutherford on the option play, and he is knifed down right at the 20 yard line. Brian Welch made the tackle for the Hokies. Rutherford loses a couple of yards on the play. It'll be second down and 12. Walt Harris is content to let that clock roll. I'll tell you what, you go back to our meeting with Priestley yesterday and the things that he said, and I kind of looked at him a little bit disbelieving when he talked about being able to go downfield and early in the ballgame take his shots, but uh, he was very prophetic in what he told us. He was, and, and, and they did exactly what he said. He used hard counts, even got his own guys in the first in the first half with a few call, calls, but he was the guy who was going up top early and made it, made it happen early and got on top of Virginia Tech, and they've never recovered. A timeout has been called by the University of Pittsburgh. The Panthers are on their way to a win. We'll be back after this. It seems Germany's got a taste for America. Backslide. I love you. You've come to the right place. You can feel the spirit. And you know they're glad to see you. And it's good to get together and enjoy some awesome steak. So don't just go out. Go out back in Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. It seems Germany's got a taste for America. Backslide. There's never been a better time to discover Niagara Falls, Ontario. But the falls are just the beginning. From the Great Gorge Adventure to the thrill of Casino Niagara, there's a Niagara Getaways package that's right for you from just $64 U.S. per night. Call to book your Niagara trip today. Very nice way for the Panthers to celebrate 25 years of anniversary for their national championship team. They played like national champions today. Rutherford gets tripped up. He was brought down over there by Cobb, who was able to chase him down. Let's take a look now at our best play of the game. It's brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, and the best part is our people. Well, we said at the top of the show that Antonio Bryant was going to have to get his and get it early, and he certainly did. And, and Priestley, nice job, touch pass to Bryant, and this got everything going. This is when the momentum for Pittsburgh started, and they haven't let up. 
Well the other good thing for Pittsburgh today was that they responded even after the block kick that turned into a touchdown right what had been happening to the Panthers during the course of this season as soon as one thing went bad they tended to fold their tents it happened against Syracuse it happened at Boston College but it did not happen today and here's Rutherford again on the keeper you get down to about the 22 yard line before he's double teamed. we head to the final minute of this afternoon's football game a game that has been dominated by Pittsburgh it was seven seven after the first quarter but it's been all Pittsburgh since the Panthers will run another play rather than try to add to their score total another story in this game were all the mistakes the mental mistakes and the penalties by Virginia Tech early in the football game they never got anything going because they were making too many mistakes early in the game well when you have six 15 yard penalties that will kill you in a hurry absolutely that was Jemison carrying the ball forward he is another freshman a true freshman they've got three at tailback and the fans now are going to start to celebrate because Walt Harris's team is going to win its third game its second in a row and uh, for the first time in four years Virginia Tech is going to lose its second game in a row the Hokies will have one more play possibly to get off but Antonio Bryant and the Panthers can begin the celebration they played very well this afternoon they certainly did and they played very well on all phases the defensive philosophy is 11 as one and they did just that they played very well in all phases and every player they were sacking the quarterback and making plays down the field they played a complete football game I think they need to keep wearing those hard hats that's right this quick pitch to the outside they try to cut it back that's Ward who fumbled the last time he had the ball and that is probably going to do it. The final 15 seconds will tick away as Frank Beamer hits to the center of the diamond. And he will greet Walt Harris there. 38 to 7. Pittsburgh, a shocking win over Virginia Tech. There's the meeting of the coaches at midfield. Frank Beamer's been there before. He knows what it feels like. But not lately. Antonio Bryant being congratulated by Virginia Tech and we congratulate them too because the Panthers have played very well they dominate the football game they win it by a final of 38 to 7 for Greg Roberts and Don McPherson I'm John Sanders thanks for watching our game this afternoon this has been a presentation of ESPN plus the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television college football on WTAE TV is brought to you by McDonald's McDonald's